They should straight up lay down here. They would never fall. Oh my God. <laughs> Anaseo, welcome to Seoul, South Korea. This incredible alpha city is the capital and largest city in South Korea with a population of 9.9 .9 million people. In fact, the Seoul capital area is home to roughly half of the country's entire population. It's the political, cultural, and economic center of South Korea and a global leader in technology, transportation, and tourism. Seoul has a long and rich history as the capital of several Korean dynasties and contains five UNESCO World Heritage Sites, including palaces, fortresses, and royal tombs, which showcase the city's rich cultural heritage. In this documentary, we're exploring this extraordinary city's modern and traditional sites, from the regal Yongbokgung Palace to the bustling Tonggin Market. Along the way, we're taking a deep dive into Korean cuisine, from dokboki to gimbap to kimchi, and so much more. So come with me and let's explore Seoul, South Korea. Let's go. Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, sunny Seoul, South Korea. Today, what we're doing is we're gonna explore Nam Day Moon Market, the oldest and biggest market in all of Korea. It actually dates back to 1414, and there's over 10,000, 10,000 stalls. There's everything here. Clothing, there's bars, there's cafes, and there's a lot of street food, like a lot. Yeah. And street food here in Seoul is amazing, so I'm super excited to share with you guys. Are you guys ready? Let's go explore the market. Follow us. What's up, man? We're just enjoying the sun here. Walking, this is just like the beginning of the market, guys. Wait till we get to the heart of it. Like, it is packed with people. Looking off into the distance, it's just like a sea of people. They look like little ants scurrying about. It's so funny, man. And yeah, we're just kind of uh, we're working our way into the heart of the street food area. Right now, it's more stalls selling various kinds of items. But once we get to the street food area, it's going to be fantastic. The first thing we're trying is manduki. It's basically a hot dog that has french fries on top and it's like mixed with batter and then deep fried. Okay, this, <laughs> I've actually tried this before, but it, I tried the version that's just cheese, not hot dog. And it costs 2001. It's like super Korean fast food. I mean, really filling. I don't know if I'm gonna love it. I'll try some. And we also have four different sauces you can put on top. Yeah. I'll probably go with super spicy. Let me just try it alone first. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no hot dog there. And the french fries and batter. Mm. <laughs> mm. Nice, nice. A little salty. Put some of this on top. Super spicy. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, it has a kick. Mm. But you have to have spicy sauces in Korean food. It's actually the sauce. Hey, sriracha. It's spicy, huh? Super, I'm gonna try the less spicy this time. Yeah. Right there. Mmm. Now that's like sweet. Mmm. I mean, guys, this is a super fast food. Not my favorite. I mean, I wouldn't eat it again. Yeah. But if you want something on the go, really fast, filling, try this 2000, so it's like $1.80. Not bad. But I'm good with this. You want some more? I'm good too. Alright. Yeah, be careful with that super spicy sauce. It's like way too spicy. And right next to the street food vendor, we have this little restaurant. And right here, they're showing you all the food, right? So they have the fake food. So many different bowls. Oh my god, that looks really good. Really spicy. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we're gonna stay away from the restaurants. We really want to just like stick to, to street food. My mouth is still very tingly right now. And you can see a lot of people. Like this is like a never ending amount of people here. Oh my god. It's, it's sometimes like a, I get claustrophobic just when it's like over, over abundance of people. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a good place to buy stuff. Prices are reasonable. You can kind of find just about everything here. Like you can buy, you can buy eyeglasses, you can buy clothes, you can buy watches, you can buy shoes, you can buy anything you can imagine they have it here. And they have some of these these floating areas, I think they offer even more discount type items. If you see a store that's really busy, they're usually having like a flash sale. It's oh, kind wow. of wild, yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing, man. Wow, now, now we enter an area where it's like, God, you can't even move in here. So there's all these little like floating vendors, right? So they have the umbrella. But I don't see that much street food around here. Where's the street food at? 
Whoa, it's like a never ending amount of vendors. Again, 10,000 vendors. All right, so I always get stuff for my nephews. I've been looking for shirts and then I saw their favorite sport. They're literally like little professional soccer players. So I'm gonna buy them this. This looks very small. So it's Korea in red, FIFA 2014. Let me see, there's another one. This is older. Maybe that one? Oh, it's too big. <laughs> Oh man, this is like tiny though. This is like for a baby. That's a baby size, yeah. That's yeah, not good. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be hard, man. It's gonna be hard. The sizes are really difficult here. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. not, I'll get them one of these shirts. Yeah. You know, one of these just says Korea. That's really cool. But I feel like this is like for a small doll. Because small, and look at it. They don't have me. It fits me. Yeah. I need for kids. Let me let me see. Let me see. So those vendors aren't very nice. They didn't help us at all. They weren't paying attention. I was asking for small. They just didn't say anything. And Sam was telling me it's a little, it's a little rough around the edges here. Well, I've been to a lot of markets in Korea, and I'd say this is probably the, there's a bit of it's a bit jaded here sometimes. I've always, every time I've come here, I've kind of had someone tell me to put my camera away or just kind of like a little bit unfriendly service. Not everybody, but just always once every time I come here. So. I just think it's weird. I'm trying to buy something from them, spending money, yeah, and no service. Yeah, it's weird, dude. Ah, whatever. Well, let's go eat. A lot of other places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go find some food. Yeah. And next up, we're trying something I haven't tried yet. This is just rice cake fried. So it's duck and it's fried. It costs 1,000 each. Mm. Okay. It's very tough on the outside. Nice and dense in the middle. Very ricey. What does it remind me of? It's like a, almost like polenta, this one. Thick polenta. Thick polenta, huh? Yeah. Mm. Not bad, not bad. But, I mean, for a dollar, what did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was decent. I wouldn't say it was great. I mean, I like the, the crispiness of the exterior, but man, it was lacking the sauce. It really needed a spicy sauce, yeah. like a gochujang sauce. I would have, like, that would have 10x that for sure. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, basically the inside was chewy, dense, tasted like an arepa, a Venezuelan arepa. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's when there's no cheese or ham or anything. And yeah, I mean, very bland. It, bland she she yeah. definitely needs to get sauce. Get rid of the worms and get yeah. sauce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, definitely. Are you gonna eat those silk worms again? Oh, never. Never, 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 never. never. <laughs> it's been very, very hard to find street food here. I don't know what happened because uh, you know, it looks like one of the best places in Seoul to eat street food. And there's super, like it's super limited right now. Yeah, Nothing. yeah, you have to walk quite a, quite a ways in between stalls. I found every time I've come back to this market, there seems to be less street food options. I think they're kind of, uh, they're changing their, uh, uh, the, it's just changing. The market's changing to more retail, I suppose. You know, it's funny though, because in China, in Shanghai, yeah. they're getting rid of street food completely. Oh yeah? Yeah, they're just like oh, wow. getting like wow. gone. Maybe it's not as lucrative as like buying things. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in China they're thinking about the cleansiness. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's this? I'm actually getting a little frustrated here trying to find food. This is like possible. Where is the food? Oh my God, I don't even know why the cars are allowed in here. It's pretty crazy. You can hurt somebody. So basically there's a ramp that's leading down underground. And if I remember correctly, a few years ago, I found some, uh, some kind of a gimbop down here. So let's see if it's still there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's people coming up with, with bowls and stuff, right? So there should be food down here? It's like a, a stairway down to a subway, but it's actually it's not a subway, it's more the market. All right, so next up, we're trying gimbap. So it's basically like a rice roll, got seaweed. We have a radish, carrots, egg. Pick one of these up. Oh, that's amazing. Dip into the sauce. Mm. <laughs> Spicy, spicy. Is it spicy? spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just said she warned you of the spice. <laughs> it's wasabi. Oh. It's like wasabi mixed with soy. Okay. Mm. Very nice, dude. Oh, dude, it's like a great little roll. <clears throat> Very hot. Dude, it's really potent. Oh. My God, it's nice crunch. I love the way they wrap the seaweed. It's got some sesame. Nice with the egg as well. I barely see that, and that's the cool thing about Korea is that their the rolls aren't like they usually are like this, like more veggie over you know, seafood or meats. Oh, let's let's try another one. So you gotta be really careful though. Don't get too much because it will burn. Look at that. Whoa. Mm. Cucumber, nice crunch. Yeah, it's hot. 
It's really hot. It's a different type of heat, you know? It's not like the, the red chili paste that like really sticks for a while and like kills you. This one's a quick burst of heat and you're fine. Look, perfect now. Wow, I'm really in love with this. Like, I really love it. Mm. Look at the whole thing. I'm gonna get two of these. <laughs> Only 2001? Yeah, for the whole thing. So less than two bucks for this? Way better value than some of the other things. Way better. Way better. Mm. I think what's really cool about this particular place is that it's kind of down in the basement away from all the hustle and bustle. I think that's why you get really friendly service here. The people are super nice. Also, you get maybe a better price too because of that reason. Yum yum. Try one here with the heat, with the heat. Oh, with the heat, with the heat. Mm. Oh yeah. Intense wasabi. <laughs> It's intense, right? These are really good. You can tell they're nice and fresh. And the ingredients are, are crunching in my mouth. So it's always a good time. Fresh ingredients. Very good. So far, that's been my favorite thing. So good. So good. Rice rolls in Korea, they're the best. As soon as we got back upstairs, we saw a sign and it says second floor Korean folk craft. So they have a lot of stuff here, like crafty stuff. I don't know, I already bought my mask, so I don't think I need that. But this is really cool. Oh, there's a lot of souvenirs. Oh, this is the place for souvenirs. Whoa. This is a massive, a massive floor. Oh my god. I mean, you go in every aisle and it's just like... You know, it reminds me of a maze. It is a maze, <laughs> yeah. it is a maze. Luckily I know we're over there. Yeah, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta remember your bearings over here. Yeah, and over here, I mean, as you can see, just everything. You got yeah. pillowcases, you have clocks. My god, look at all the clocks. I don't see anything that's super, super Korean, except this right here. This is what you got, right? Yeah, I think that's basically literally what I want. Oh wow, look, wow. more mask. Wow. Dude, a lot of masks. Here's all the masks. Oh, oh. look at you. You're a pro. Mm. This is beautiful. So you said 40,000? Yeah. Oh, wow, dude. <laughs> wow. That's like a real mask. Oh, wow. That's like a mask you put on. It's good quality. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's actually a thing for my head. Oh wow. Where did David go? Yeah, where am I? Where's David? I don't even see myself. It's very nice. So forty thousand for that one. Yeah. I think I'm gonna pass. Yeah. I, I think I got two really cool ones. I might have to pass on this. All right, we're back out in the market. Thousand times. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, well, you got, you got a really cool mask. Yeah. Yeah, something I like right. It a lot, and um, yeah, I mean, just so many stalls, such a small space, and it's just endless. That's just one floor. It just keeps going up and it keeps going down. I mean, to just explore that one mall would have probably take two or three hours, you know. Yeah, and you would never notice the mall because of all the vendors. The yeah. door is like hidden right here. It's a hidden door. It's a hidden door right there. Wow, that's crazy. And there's there's stores like this throughout the whole market. Unbelievable. Yeah, because basically every single building is similar. Yeah, similar. Similar. Wow. Uh, I need a little one. Whoa, we each get to try one each. That's perfect. What is that? Uh, the rice cakes. Rice cakes? Yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, we found a lady here selling rice cakes. It's two different types. Looks like it has red beans. Yeah, she's got a mobile mobile stand here. <laughs> this is amazing. It's a, it's a makeshift, makeshift. There's like cardboard and wheels. I love it. All right. I love it. She's out making some money. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two different rice balls. One of them's green. One of them's white. This one has like a little raisin on top. I'm gonna start with this one. Mmm. Oh wow. Super spongy. I think in the middle. I'm gonna have peanuts, I'm gonna have peanuts. Oh, very dense. Mmm. It's a little sweet, but just a tad. Not too bland. So I like it, so I'm gonna keep eating. Mmm. Favorite here. I hate it when it's too bland, but that one's super sweet. Alright, next one. Mmm. I like the other one better. That one's sweeter. This one. Yeah, very spongy, very dense. And I don't know exactly what that is. It, obviously it's not cheese, 
Maybe some like powdered sugar. Yeah. But it's not sweet at all. No. I'll finish it. So the price for this was 1,000 won for four. So like 90 cents for four. Really filling, great snack. Oh. Maybe the best value so far. Most affordable. Yeah, most affordable. Let's go. All right, guys, so we're trying mandu. So it's steamed dumplings, Korean style. We have two of them. We have kimchi and we have gogi, which is like beef or pork inside. So it's just meat, right? And ooh, it's still really, really hot. It actually costs 4,000 won for five, but we just needed four, so they gave it to us for 3,200 to so give us a little discount. Oh my God, it's still really hot. It's piping hot, dude. It's still super hot. Let me pull this out. Oh, the kimchi one looks amazing. Yeah. Super red. Oh, right there. I know I'm gonna love this. I love kimchi. Sam said he loved it. The best thing all day, right? Mm. Oh, wow. Oh my God. It's a little hot. Mmm. I love the layers in here. You have the kimchi. You have some other, I think there's like pork in here. What else is in here? Some and some noodles, right? Yeah, a little like noodles, a little veg, I think. Glass noodles. Wow, look at that. This is definitely the best thing I've eaten all day. Dude, it's spicy. I, I just love dumplings. Mandu for the win. Mandu for the win, exactly. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Very filling. There's so much inside. The dough part yeah. is very little. Yeah. They give you an excess amount of kimchi, lots of noodles, some herbs, and I'm guessing it's pork, dude. I'm guessing. Has to be, right? Has to be. It's the cheapest meat in Korea, so usually dumplings have pork. Mm. So next up, we have the pork one, right? Yeah. Straight pork. It's called uh, gogi in Ooh. Korean. Gogi. Yeah. Oh, this one's so hot. I'm gonna put it on the plastic here. So you can see it. Wow. As you can tell, it doesn't have kimchi because of the color, right? So it's a little green in the middle. You can see through there, through the layers. Oh, it looks more moist. I can feel it. I feel it's like. Yeah, about to it, pop. it actually is, dude. It's got a lot of juice in it. <laughs> wow. Let's do this. Mmm. Uh oh. Let's move, let's move. Let's try not to get run over. I don't know by why this car is coming through here. I know. Every yeah. every once in a while you get a random vehicle. You have more glass noodles, obviously zero kimchi, a lot of pork. I mean excess amount of pork and it's super juicy. I mean it's gonna burst. Oh my god. Mmm. Super tasty, very filling, yummy. This is the best thing in the market. What's amazing is that vendor's been there for over 10 years. So Sam went there a long time ago. Obviously, this place has been open since 1414. <laughs> so some people have been here for a few hundred years, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm. The mandu. When you come to this market, this is the number one thing you should eat. The mandu. I concur. Done. So this is dakboki, the most classic Korean dish. As you can see, rice cakes, like finger looking rice cakes, and also fish cake right here, which is the oden, right? And they put it in this sauce, the super spicy sauce. Gochujang, gochujang's in everything. It really is spicy, it's delicious. I love this thing. Mm. I've been here already like, what, nine days in South Korea? I've eaten it almost every single day. Like. I maybe miss one day because I eat like <laughs> three times in a day sometimes. <laughs> mm, super nice. Love the, the rice cake. A little spicy. This one's not crazy spice. Sometimes, it, like, the spice doesn't go from like one to ten for real. Yeah. So I've had it like boiling before. This is fine. This I is probably like a four. I swear this stuff is making me fat. It is. <laughs> I love the olden more than the rice cake. So, what I'll do is I'll put them together. Lots of sauce. Mm. Oh wow. I really can eat this every day. It's like when you're in Korea, if you don't eat this, you are in Korea. No. Oh. Right? It's the oh. king of street food, as far as I'm concerned. Mmm. That one is like sweet and spicy. Wow. Ooh. Damn. Dude, I'm gonna lick this. <laughs> lick that sauce. Is I think that I'm good? done with this. No, you know what? I forgot. They also gave us the olden soup. So, you know, basically it's a hot pot broth. 
Mm, very fishy. Oh, this is great. This is perfect cure for a hangover. <laughs> By the way, the bucket costs twenty five hundred, so roughly two dollars. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. We're ending off our Nam Moon street food tour with a classic Korean drink. It's the green tea latte. It's super cold, ice cold. Obviously, there's ice inside it, so it's really refreshing, especially in a super hot day like today. A bit thick as well, mm, like a little smoothie. Oh man, I just love matcha. We had an incredible day today at the biggest and oldest market in Korea. I mean, it was a in a little intense, you know, like I'd say like 90% of the people were really amazing, friendly, they laughed, they offered us stuff, they'd always go like peace, you know, do you know fun stuff. But then you had a little bit of people that were like, no, 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 you know, like getting a little, felt a little grimy at certain points, but it was fine. I mean, in terms of food, really, really nice stuff. My favorite stuff was the end, obviously the tapoki and then uh, the... The mandu. The mandu. Yeah. The mandu, the, the kimchi mandu, I've never had that before. It was like the two things I love most here in Korea. Mandu and kimchi, spicy, just super delicious. When you come to Seoul, you have to come here, experience it, you know, people watch, go shopping for souvenirs, go eat some street food. They also have restaurants if you don't want to eat street food, so you can go inside, sit down, have some traditional Korean dishes. There's no Western dishes here, so don't try to eat Western food in Korea. And uh, yeah, guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Sam's channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Seoul, South Korea. I've been eating a lot of barbecue on this trip, but I still haven't tried galbi, marinated beef, Korean style. And we're gonna go to this restaurant right behind us. Sam's been there, he came here like three years ago with his wife and he said it's amazing. And one thing you have to know here in Seoul is that if a restaurant has lasted more than a few years, it is amazing because things come and go and this one's still here. And then after this, we're going to see the Chungachong, which is a beautiful area and it has a long stream that goes right through the center of Seoul. I'm very excited because it looks beautiful. I just saw some images on Google and it looks really amazing. And the best time to go there is at night, you know, maybe like right after sunset. And yeah, let's go eat some Korean barbecue. I'm super excited. It's like my fourth time. Woo! <laughs> And here we go. We sat down at this beautiful restaurant. It's a little fancy as you can see. I mean, it's more upscale, but the food looks phenomenal. Right here, we have the galbi. We have the marinated beef. Look at this thing. Just, wow. Got a bone right there. Grab it like that. Oh, so good, man. And then on the side, we also have two mushrooms. We have all the band cheese right here. So what we do is we lift this up a little bit. I'm going to put mine on the side. Sam already put his. Oh, I gotta put it in here a little bit. Move Ooh. it to the side a little bit. Like that. Wow. So once it's done cooking, we have the scissors. We cut it up in strips and we eat it. And yeah, we have a lot of other stuff here. I also got a craft beer. We won the craft route. This is some Korean craft beer. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> you are here. Man, this is a good IPA. Really good. Dude, I'm excited. This is awesome. Like, this is the best. I love this. Korean barbecue, lots of good sides. We also have delicious sauce. This, uh, what is it, jam? Uh, samjang. Samjang. We can get more over there, self-serve. I'm excited. And now, that's step one, right? Yep. Now we have to wait. Now we wait. After the beef was cooking for a little while, one of the guys came over and he helped us. He basically started flipping it, cutting it in pieces. We let it cook for a little bit, and then we moved it over to a plate. And we have all these sides. So we have like, this one's a like crab. This one, I have no idea what it is. It looks like some either fish and vegetables. It looks really good. We got loads of lettuce, obviously to wrap the beef. We have this like radish soup. It looks really cold. We have the best sauce in the world. We have over here another uh, soup. It looks really good, like a tofu, soybean paste soup. And right here we have some veggies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive into all the sides first. Let me start off with the soup. The soup looks really good. Oh, there's beef in here too. There's beef, there's mushrooms, oh. I'm gonna get a little bit of that beef. Oh my God, you know what? Let me get some of that broth. Oh, it's like smoking hot. Oh, mm, so good. Mm, so many flavors in there, super rich. You taste beef in the broth. And right here we have beef, and it's like fatty beef. Make some of the beef, some tofu. Mm. 
Oh my god, super tender, super fatty. Mmm, it's like a burst of fat right there. Oh, and this right here. Oh my god, there's a chili here and some onions. Oh my god, dude, hot. Mm. I'm gonna lay off that for a second. You know what? Let me jump on this one right here. I love greens. This one has another chili. I mean, this place loves chilies. Oh, I'm gonna grab that chili. Red, nice chili. Super wet, very moist, very crunchy. It's like a big root. This tastes similar to spinach. Mmm, it's really cold. It's ice cold. It's a good little vegetable salad. On to the next one. Right here we have something really amazing. I haven't seen this as a side yet. It's like chili crab. Chili crab. And the way you eat this, you do a few things here. You can go in and try to pull like meat out of the, the claw, or you can go into the body. You suck everything out. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow, there's a lot of meat in there. Very spicy red paste sauce. <coughs> like really good. Mm. The only way to get the meat is that, like that. Suck it all out. You don't want to like bring it to the body. Cause like, I wouldn't want to eat all that, right? Put that aside. Thank you, my friend. Okay, nice for trying some of these. I don't know what this is. First time seeing this. Ooh, getting a lot of spice right now. That should be a fish. Mm. It's more salty. It's very crunchy because of. This, it could be like another root, right? And it might be mayo. I'm not 100% sure about that. It's a little sweet. Mm, really nice. Oh, that's really flavorful. Next, I'm gonna jump into the radish. I don't know. Maybe I just try a little bit. I'm not really into this. The white radish, super cold soup. Ice cold. Ice cold. Mm. Alright guys, enough of the size. Like enough. Let's dive into the main event. Marinated beef. Oh look at that. Looks so good. I'm gonna put it right here into the sauce. Dive in. Whoa. Mm. Whatever they marinate it with is super freaking good. Like it, it's like a glaze that has been basically infused into the beef. A little sweet, that gives it the kick. But this is just like pure spice. Pure. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the lettuce, right? Put some beef right here. Grab a tiny bit of garlic, it's not burnt. Unfortunately, we burnt it. <laughs> you gotta be really be careful with this, you can burn things so easily. So you turn into a small cube right there. Wow, this is the best thing in Korea. Mm. The, beef is, the beef is so tender. Mm. Oh my god. It's like butter. It literally fall apart. I don't know what type of beef it is, but it's amazing. And we have some of the ribs cooking as you can see. Like the fat coming out. Should probably flip them over really fast. Ooh, look at that right there. Oh, that's nice. Charred. Oh, that's gonna burn. Look at that. Oh, probably should take these off, no? What do you think? No, it's close. It's close. Close? Maybe another yeah. minute? Yeah. Another minute right there. And the last thing to try is the mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> we both got one mushroom. One. <laughs> been here. Use it well. This is the best sauce on the planet. Mm. Well, incredible meal. The thing we're going to do now is enjoy it. Oh, I forgot to mention, it costs 2800 so like 24 US dollars per person to eat this. I don't think it's bad. I mean, if I go to a steakhouse in America, I'll spend like $50 on a steak, you know? Really expensive compared to this. My beer, IPA, craft beer from Korea, seven, so like $6, right? 
But yeah, we also have like a little buffet there with like some some salads, some sides. There's also some desserts as well. So if you really want more food, you can get it there. If you want more of this sauce, they have never-ending sauce there. Should I just go back there right now? <laughs> So David, this has been a fantastic feast. Galbi here in Seoul, South Korea. It's incredible. And the last thing to cook are the ribs. We got a little bit of meat here on the sides. Lots of charred meat. Oh man. You know what, I'm just gonna do just that. No more talking. Oh, oh yeah. Mm. Super chewy. Crunchy on the outside. Packed with flavor. I feel like this has absorbed more of the um, marinade more than anything else. Mmm, super chewy and crispy. Very different from the rest of the meat. I like it though, man. We've had a lot of different banchans, different side dishes that we normally don't have. And so it's just been a unique experience trying all these different things. Korean barbecue, man. You gotta love it. Gumbe. Gumbe. Yeah. What a feast, man. Feast to feast. For 28,000 won, we got to try delicious beef, marinated beef, Colby. It was amazing, man. Maybe one of the best barbecues we've had the whole time. Incredible. Love all the side dishes. Love the service. Just like Korean barbecue is just so special. Like, I've only got a couple days left here, and I'm like, man, I wish we could stay another month just to eat more barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is that good. Uh, oh my god, it was really mouthwatering every single bite. We didn't show you guys everything because it's literally us just trying the same beef yeah. over and over again. Over and over again. But yeah, I mean, it's something you have to try when you come here to Seoul, South Korea. And next, up, we're gonna catch a taxi and go to Chongichong. Chongichong. Let's go there. Let's go. And after two minutes, we got a taxi. Let's go. There's no Uber here. Chongichong Becca. Ah, ne. The streets. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Samga? Uh, Samga? Yeah. Uh. And this is Chongachong, as you can see. Beautiful stream yeah. with like two little boardwalks on the sides. Looks awesome, man. I haven't seen something like this. Really cool. Yeah, it's incredible. Can't wait to walk it. And there's some stepping stones for you to cross too. So oh, I'll have no to way. do that as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah. So right here we have a map of Chonga Chong. Yeah. And uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bridges across, like this one we're yeah. just on. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, like eight different stepping stone areas. Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. So I think it, it basically extends more than more than seven blocks then. So yeah, if you, go for a, if you do the whole length of it, it's a pretty good walk. Yeah, I mean, this is only this, a small section. Look at this, look how long it is. Yeah. Oh, oh my wow. Gosh. Oh yeah. I don't know if we'll walk the whole thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll check it out for a bit. <laughs> this is really exciting. I've never been to a place like this. Yeah. Like it's really, really different. Yeah. So this is just a regular stream. Yeah. And they said, hey, let's fix it up. Let's fix it up. I guess what happened was it, it used to be a, a normal stream. And then they actually, uh, there was a, a government that, that paved over it. And then what happened was a, a recent mayor decided to try to like, they wanted to beautify Seoul, make it look a little bit of a nicer place because the downtown area maybe lacked a little bit of green spaces, places to walk. And so they went down here and, and fixed it up again. I love how they have so many trees and plants around here. Like right around the stream, certain areas you're walking through, you're walking through like a little, little mini forest. And then other areas, it's like super open. You can see the other side. Right now, it feels like we're in the Everglades, man. Yeah, it's a little green oasis out here. Yeah, and, and we just passed one of the the big stones, but there were some people on them. I'm looking for another one. Where are they? Should be here somewhere. I saw a lot on the map. Whoa, this is beautiful. This is the middle of the city. I can barely hear cars. Yeah, it's like the wall somehow. Like, like the sound. Or something. Yeah, it's like you're below them, you know? I, so I like, wonder if there was some like engineering thought put into that, like to try to the noise and the pollution or something. It's pretty impressive. Oh, look, look, here it is, here it is. I'm gonna cross it. I'm gonna cross it. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. Be careful doing this at night. Oh yeah, it's a little slippery, a little bit. Pretty cool, yeah, just a little bit. You're fine. Wow, it was awesome. Here we have another little stone path. Very easy to cross, just be careful. Oh, this is great. Right here, it's just like, 
All you hear is that beautiful stream. Oh man, it's awesome. See you later. <laughs> so we made it here under one of the bridges and as you can see, under all the bridges there's a lot of light at night. Everywhere else it's a little dark, you know, except for where the stones are. There's a little light there, obviously they don't want you to slip. But here it's really bright, people are hanging out on the steps, relaxing, you either hear music, talking to friends or, you know, couples like you see right there. And yeah, tonight we had an incredible galbi, delicious marinated beef. I mean, wow, amazing, like really delicious. It was super mouthwatering. Like every single bite was just like explosing in your mouth and so tasty. Whoa, what was that? Crazy. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, today's been like a little slower pace. Oh wow, look at this, guys. You gotta see this. Exercise. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a place to go running, and it goes for a while. We only went like four blocks. We're still, I mean, we're walking for like 30 minutes, but it's perfect. I mean, it's a great way to end the night here at uh, Chongguchuk. Uh, and yeah, like I said before, it's a stream. It's like an oasis in the middle of Seoul. You barely hear the outside noise. It really feels like you're somewhere else in South Korea. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to both of our channels. And next time you come to South Korea, eat every type of barbecue. It's so delicious. I can eat it every single day. Peace. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful, sunny Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm very excited because I'm taking you to eat a typical Korean breakfast which involves some sides, maybe some mandu which are Korean dumplings, and today we're also gonna try tonkas, which is a pork cutlet with a sweet sauce. And this restaurant is a franchise that's actually located right next to Seoul Station, which is right there. And after we eat, we're gonna go straight up the mountain to Seoul Tower to get incredible views overlooking the city. Are you guys ready? I'm very hungry. I brought my appetite. Let's go. So this place is called Gimbap Jungkook and it is a very popular chain of a gimbap restaurant here in Korea. Now what gimbap restaurants typically serve are classic Korean dishes. You get things like bokkeopbap, fried rice. You get things like ramen, which is the Korean noodles. You get mandu, the Korean dumplings. And you get other kinds of dishes, some meats and a few other types. And of course the gimbap, the Korean rice rolls. So it's a really great place to grab a delicious meal that's also inexpensive. All right, check out this feast. Oh my God, I love it. We got the kimchi mandu. Oh, these steamed dumplings are fantastic. We tried that yesterday and I am in love with it. So we got more. We got the banshee, right? So we have the mixed veg, cold mixed veg. We have the kimchi. No meal in Korea is complete without the kimchi. You have to get it. We have the Korean pancake. They chopped it up, right? We have the yellow radish. Here we have egg. It looks like a, yeah, it's egg with some, uh, some vegetables, like an omelet cut up as well. And then the star of the show, the pork cutlet. The pork cutlet is called tonkas. It looks amazing. It has this like super red sauce on top, like reddish brown. And we got some cabbage on the side. We have some rice. Oh, enough talking. Let's start. Let's start with the egg right here. Mmm. Mmm. It's a veg omelet. That's what it is. Here in Korea, it's chopstick trout. Wow, it was so good. Okay, next up, I'm gonna go for some of the veg. Oh, I love the veggies here. Veggies in Korea. There's no better country in the world for veg. Oh, wow. Super fresh, crunchy, very moist. A little bit of kick at the end. Mm. Not too hot, but just right. That's what I love also about Korea. They always throw a little spice. It's one of the countries, I think it's the only country where like almost every single thing has a little kick. Maybe Thailand too. Here we have the yellow radish. Good powder cleanser. Mmm. Very crunchy. Extremely crunchy. Oh man. I love this. We haven't been eating it too much, but I gotta say the few times I've tried it, it's amazing. I think it's like a leek pancake. Mmm. Wow. Savory pancake. That's what it is. No, I have to get another one there. It's so good. Mm. Oh wow. The kick from there. I'm trying to tingle with my, my upper lip. 
hot. It's really hot. <laughs> and then the kimchi. And this is extremely hot, as you can see. We got the red chili paste right there. Why not? Spicy fermented cabbage. All day long. And next up, we're gonna try the mandu, the kimchi mandu. Nice steamed dumplings. I just love the presentation here too. They're beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. I'll say, now this is my all time favorite dumpling in the world. The kimchi is really hot, so they give you like an abundance of kimchi. Like there's so much in there. Very thin dough. Love how they steamed it. You can also get it grilled as well, but I'd rather have it steamed. It's healthier, right? And over here, we have the star. Get some of that sauce. Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna be so good, man. Alright, let's cut this up. Let's cut this bad boy. Wow. And the portion is extremely generous. Wow. Look at that. Lots of good pork. Nice and crispy. Okay, let me get a piece. Dude, it's delicious. It's sweet. The sauce is very sweet. Feels almost like a marmalade, but it's not a marmalade. I don't know exactly what it is. Do you know? I think it's like a sweet, it's a kind of a sweet gravy. Sweet gravy? Okay. Yeah. It pairs perfectly well with the cutlet. You know, it's fried, nice piece of pork in the middle. Oh my god, it's a super filling dish. It was too much. <laughs> It's this a huge like, portion too. It's unreal. <laughs> I can't believe I tr I'm trying this for the first time. Ten days into my trip, first time I'm eating it. Mmm. Yeah, huge portion. So basically, it's like a milanesa, you know? Milanesa, Korean style, with delicious sauce on top. Ah. That might be my new favorite dish. <laughs> non spicy, non spicy. <laughs> David, this tonkas is absolutely unreal. This Korean breaded pork cutlet. I loved your comparison to a milanese. Like it's so similar to a milanese, a schnitzel. But what really separates it, obviously, is the sauce on top. Kind of sweet sauce, tangy sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. I love how crispy it is on the outside. I and mean, then how tender it is in the middle. Mm. Unbelievable. And what's amazing about these places, these kind of gimp up restaurants, is they tend to be open 24 7. And Everything that's listed on the menu is available any time of day. So, walking at 9 in the morning, you can get this. 12 noon, no problem. Midnight, again, it's there. It's just unbelievable. All these typical Korean food items available any time of day. You gotta love that. Now, let's head to Seoul Tower. It's actually right up here, up a hill. We have to get a taxi though. You can walk it, but... I think it's easier to just take a taxi and once we get there we're gonna have to jump into a, like a cable car and go all the way up to the station. So you've done this before, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's such an incredible view. The reason being is that the, the, the tower is actually located on top of a, well, I, I consider it more of a hill, technically it's called a mountain. <laughs> well, what is the name of it? It's uh, Namsan. Namsan? Yeah, Namsan. And uh, yeah, you get an entire view of the city. It's, it's incredible. Wait till you see it. Dude, we're on a hill. I can't yeah. even get out of the car. Oh, and here we go. Okay, so when you come into the tower, if you want to take the cable car up, specify cable car. If not, they'll drop you off in the park like they did for us. And we're gonna actually just walk straight to the tower. It's 2,100 meters, so not that far. Uh, I think maybe 15, 20 minutes. I hope so. <laughs> and then once we're done, then we'll take the cable car down. Yeah, I've actually, I've actually gone up this before. We're gonna get some great vantage points, and uh, I mean, we gotta burn off the tone cast anyways. It's not that bad of a hike. I mean, it's gonna take us like 20 minutes. It's fine. If you guys are nervous about the hike, don't be. No. It's not that bad, and there's also resting areas. Yeah. A lot of people just, you know, they'll go up a little bit. The rest. We're trying to get there a little quicker, so we're just speeding up. Yeah. But obviously it's a little steep, and there's buses passing by. I don't know if they take you to Seoul Tower, but uh, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I mean, the thing I'm liking the most right now is that there's there's enough shade and a breeze that it's actually cooler here than it was in the city. Oh yeah. So. 
I love I love the oxygen. But we are sweating because we're going uphill, obviously. Yeah, we're going really fast too. We're like just non-stop, non-stop. But every time we see the sign, yeah. we we you know cover an extra hundred meters. Then we have like sixteen hundred meters to go. Yeah. And there it is. Look. Wow, dude. First what a viewpoint. What a view. Oh, no, pretty what? incredible. Wow, you can actually see the Han River. Oh my God. I didn't know it was this big. Yeah. Oh, that's Lothar World Tower right over there. Right there in the, in the hazy distance. Wow. That's incredible, man. Dude, it's, it's amazing because Namsen Park is this huge green area mountain right in the center of the city because to the right, to the left, behind us, in front of us, we have just skyline. Oh my God. That, dude, that looks like Beverly Hills right there. Yeah. That's part of the Beverly Hills of Seoul right there. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, just right there in the center of the city on the on this little hill. Yeah. Dude. Wow. This is this is my favorite viewpoint so far. Yeah, it's amazing, huh? It's also my first one. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you getting tired or what? Oh, a bit. Oh man. I mean, yeah, I'm out of shape for sure. But uh, having a giant town cast in the belly doesn't help. Does it doesn't aid the process much? <laughs> but it's been great. I mean, the breeze is making it manageable. So we'll be there soon. Yeah, and I recommend coming here in the morning or in the late afternoon. Don't come here when it's like midday. It's probably way too hot. Way too hot, way too many people then too. Yeah. Wow, yeah. oh, we're almost there. 1200, halfway. Wow. We made it here to another vantage point. It's a whole different area of the city. That was south. Here we have west. We have all these traditional houses. We have some more skyscrapers, a lot of green area. And then right here to the right, we have Seoul Tower. Dude. There's so much green up here. So much green. Wow, man. Seeing a city from observation deck changes your whole perspective. I mean, you could really understand what this place is all about. And I really love this neighborhood right in front of us. There's like two churches, all local housing, and then behind it you have all these skyscrapers. Okay. All right, let's continue and get to the tower. After a 20 minute hike, we are here at Seoul Tower. Oh my god, we need water. So bad. Buy tickets. Yeah. Go up. Go up. Let's go. Okay, so as soon as you enter the building on the first floor, you have a lot of retail, a lot of LG screens, and then you have the ticket office, right? It costs 10,000 won per person, 8,000 per kids. I think I'm 100% sure it's 8,000 for kids, so like $9 per person. Pretty affordable. And uh, to get to the top, you have to actually go to the fifth floor. I don't know what this. Okay, there's an elevator right there. Let's go to the elevator. Oh, nice. Follow me. <laughs> And once you get here to the fifth floor, you have another elevator. But before that, there's a lot of retail. Dude, how many retail shops are there? Cafe right here, souvenirs. Oh, that's that's the line? You right. can shop until you drop. Let's get in that line. Thank you. Thank you. We made it to the observation deck at Seoul Tower, 236 meters high. Look at these views overlooking Seoul. Wow. This breathtaking. And what I love about Seoul is that you're in between all these mountains, a lot of green areas. You see Namsen Park right here. Huge park in the middle of the city. You have skyline, you have the river. And over there you have Lotte World Tower, the new tallest building in South Korea. And just like, dude, I'm mesmerized right now. And this observation deck is not so big. It's a circular observation deck, obviously. In the middle, you have this candy store, and you have all these beautiful views of Seoul. Just lots of windows, all things, just windows, windows, windows. Over here, you have a gift shop, more gift shops. Oh, there's always a gift shop in every single observation deck. And then right up here, it tells you what's in this direction. So right here we go, Osaka. Over there you have, what is it? Suva, Fiji. I mean, damn, man, this is this is amazing. Sam, what do you think? It's unbelievable. I mean, this is one of the biggest cities in the world. And being up here at the tower, you just get you just get a sense of that. Just the sheer size of this place. It just keeps going and going in all directions. Sprawling in all directions. 
And what's the name of that river? That's the Han River. The Han River? Wow. So the Han River is, is part of the new city. So like Han River is a border with the new and the old. This is the old city? Yeah. That's the new city. That's where you used to live, right? Yeah, I lived on the south side for a while. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just as big as this side now, to be honest. Wow. It's huge. By the way, the reason the audio is so bad is because as soon as we came up here, one of the security guys said, hey, put away the microphones. So we put it in our bags. And that's why it sounds like this. You know, you're getting li literally every single sound from this observation. Deck. Sorry guys. Dude, that was incredible. What a crazy view of Seoul. Like in every direction. Such a sprawling city. Half of the country's population is living here. 20 plus million. It's unbelievable. And the thing that always surprises me so much is that there's so many mountains in the backdrop. I mean, everywhere you look, there's mountain ranges. Korea is very mountainous. And yeah, it's just a spectacular view. I love the contrast between the high rises the ultra modern buildings and there's still a pocket of traditional homes in South Korea as well in Seoul and so you just what a contrast between the old and the new it just shows you how fast Seoul is moving into the future yet it's still trying to retain its past so as soon as you exit you take the elevator down it takes 25 seconds really fast yeah. you come here to this huge platform there's some retail there's a burger place a gift shop and then right over here is the cable car and that's part of the experience so let's take the cable car back down to Seoul let's do it as you head down this ramp to the funicular, you can see there's a lot of locks here. These are love locks. Obviously, you come with your wife, your girlfriend, you put a lock, you write your name, and then you're here for life. <laughs> Where's our love lock, man? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Crazy amount of love locks. And what you have to do here is you have to keep making your way down. I don't see it. It's here yeah, somewhere. It's down there. Oh, it's down there? Okay, let's go down there then. Oh, wow. Duck pokey. Duck pokey. There we go. Cable car. Showtime. And this one actually costs money. The one we had in Daegu cost nothing. Daegu was free. Yeah, Daegu was free. Definitely not free. What does it cost? Wow, seven thousand per person, one way. Ninety-five hundred round trip. So we are not bad. For sardines in the can, right? Sardines in the can. Dude, this is tight. Sardines in the can. Yeah. I mean, what an epic view, though. What I suggest is. Either get in at the end or at the beginning because the tiger will be in the middle and you can't see anything. Yeah, they crowd a lot of people in here. I feel bad for the kids behind me. Oh man, That was a quick like three minutes. Where's the exit? This way? No, exit that way. <laughs> okay. Woo! Wow, what an epic morning we just had. Starting it off with that typical Korean food breakfast, the tonkas, super delicious sweet pork cutlet, and the kimchi mandu. Oh my god, it's just, I, even thinking about it right now, just my mouth is watering. And then after that, we hiked all the way up to Seoul Tower, the second highest observation deck in the city. It's right in the center, right in the middle of this park, overlooking everything. You got mountains, skyline, river, greenery, just incredible. Next time you guys come to Seoul, I highly recommend going up to Seoul Tower and eating a typical Korean breakfast, maybe every single day if you can. <laughs> and guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm taking you to a super hidden gem called the Mangwon Market. This place looks incredible. We're actually on the west side of the city. We left Seoul Station on the light blue line, connected on the brown line, and we went to Mangwon Station. As soon as we came out, we walked like five minutes, and we're here inside, whoa, crazy. We're inside the market now. As you can see, lots of vendors, but the thing about this market is that there's no tourists. Absolutely no tourists. Lots of vegetables, lots of street food. I'm really hungry, so today what we're doing is a street food tour slash exploring. Let's go explore the Bangwon Market. And as soon as we walk in, you can see the butchers on the right. We have a bar on the left, a souvenir shop. We have more vegetables. And this is like a little supermarket right here. Check this out. Wow, everything is local. This is super nice, bro. This is like really authentic. Like really, really authentic. Yeah, it certainly is. Aside from just street food, you also have people selling produce. You have people selling groceries. There's even a stationery shop. Like it's kind of an all-purpose market in many ways. 
The first thing we're starting off with is a hot bar, which is basically a cheese stick that has been wrapped with fish, fish cake from the old end. So the, like basically hot pot, fish cake, wrapped around the cheese, and then they nuke it in the microwave. Yep. Looks amazing, and we also have like five different sauces here. I'm gonna try the spicy one. Let's dive in. Mm. So it's basically like artificial cheese in the middle, super thin layer, and the rest is the is the fish cake. Wow, very spongy, mm. pretty good. Not that bad, dude. Let me put some of the spice. Uh-oh. It's spicy. The spice in Korea the, is the, spicy. Spicy. Whoa. <laughs> It's very spicy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> very spicy. Dude, I'd say that's like a 15 out of 10, man, in terms of spice. Oh my god. Really nice. I mean, it's basically like fast food, right? They have like 20 different varieties here. They have it with cheese, they have hot dogs, they have a shrimp. We wanted to go with cheese to try something different. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty cheap. 1,000 won, so like 90 US cents. Good deal. All right, so we haven't left the spot because this lady offered us something called chipo, which is like a dried fish, super thin. What she does is she puts it on this stone grill, she slips a little bit, heats it up, then cuts it into bite-sized, you know, bites, right? And then you get the uh, hochuju sauce. A uh, gochujang, yeah. Gochujang sauce. You grab it. Oh man, it's super dried fish. Look at that. Get some of that sauce. Mmm. Salty, chewy. Pairs well with the sauce. Mmm. Sam was saying earlier that it reminds him of like an octopus. Same thing, but this is way more edible. Mmm. A little tough. Oh, I like that. Feels like it has a glaze inside too. Yeah, it's, it's a little something. bit sweet. A yes. little bit sweet. It's a little bit sweet, but the sauce pairs really well with it. Mmm. Oh yeah. And for 2001, like dollar eighty, dollar ninety US. I highly recommend it. Cheapo. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. I think we just found out it was puffer fish, right? Yeah. Wow. Man. It's so good. It's incredibly good. Like I can't stop popping it. I'm actually surprised we haven't tried it yet because I've seen it all over the place in Busan, throughout Seoul, and we were like, oh, what is that? Now we know. Cheapo. If you like fish, dried fish, this one is sweet, mm -hmm. it's nice and yummy, and Sam is, uh, he finished it all. I killed it. You want to have last piece? No, you have it. Wow, the cheapo really hit the spot. And right when we passed the cheapo spot, we got to this place and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good fresh fish. We got squid, octopus. Those crabs are alive. <laughs> so don't don't put your finger in there. Hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Must be Busan. Must be Busan. It, it does. It does. Yeah. I mean, I love this because as you can see, I mean, it's just pure locals here. People are here with their families, and the width. Oh, Sam, next three food items right here. Cool. What is this? Next up, we have Tum Sei Jan. We have four different pieces here. We actually had eight. Sam already ate his half. <laughs> it costs 1,000 won for eight pieces. Super deal. Looks amazing. Basically, this is like a vegetable tempura. I think this is also fish. Here we have like a shish kebab. There's like four or five different things here. Looks like carrots, green peas. Looks like maybe pork. Over here, we have a fish, I think. This one, I don't know exactly what that is. Mmm. Mmm. Minced pork. That's what it is. Oh, dude, it's super juicy. Nice minced pork. I love how the egg around it is a super light batter. Mmm. Very eggy. Oh, it's really nice. Very, very good. Um, I would give this. Um, I would give it some more sauce. Like I would need some spice on it. That's the only thing I would say about this. And it's obviously not salty at all. Next up, we have the cucumber. Whoa. Mmm. Oh wow. The freshest vegetables in the world come from Korea. Mmm. That one had a lot less batter. So you really got an explosion of the vegetable. Whoa, that was good, dude. That's the way the fish. Woo. Mmm. Mmm. You're right. This is maybe like cod. So it feels like a fish and chips type of uh, like, you know, haddock and chips. Really nice. 
Uh, this is actually my favorite so far. Nice. <laughs> Very filling. Mm. Here we're gonna have a lot of different flavors. So I'm gonna start from this side. Mm. Okay. Felt like a, a green bean, a radish, and pork. And now this side has a lot of pork. I think it also has like a like the fake crab right there. More green beans, some batter. I don't know what the bottom thing is, but I'm sure it's good. Wow, just almost like a pasta in there. Oh man, love the egg batter. I don't know what this lady's doing in there, but it's phenomenal. For 1,000 won, can't beat this. It's probably the best deal that we've had in Korea so far. Seriously, Ooh. we're both full after that. Yeah, it's not very healthy, <laughs> but whatever. Wow, we've been eating so much fried fast food that I need to get a little break. And yeah, we're just gonna keep exploring the market. And right here we have this vendor that has every single type of kimchi you can imagine. I mean, there's over 200 in the country. He has easy, like 25 different ones. There's dried fish. Mmm, everything is so good. His radishes. But as you can see, everything is super, super red. Like, it's all spicy. Kimchi's always spicy. No, it's okay, it's okay. So we're passing by a place that has all kinds of different chicken. White cream chicken, cheese mustard, fruit chicken, gangjong, uh, sweet chicken, spicy chicken. All the chicken in the world. All fried, all spicy, but here they have the best KFC in the world. Korean fried chicken. I don't know, if Sam, you don't want some? I, I mean, the fruit chicken, the sweet chicken, the sweet chicken. I mean, let's take a break. Let's take a break. This vendor's super nice. Oh, 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 you okay? She's giving me some Korean rice wine. Oh, wow. Mmm. That's, that's tasty. It's wine? Rice wine. Rice wine. But it's alcohol? Alcohol? Yeah, okay. Mmm. And she has this, like, fish. Spicy. You think it's spicy? Mm. Bone. Bone, bone. Little bone. Too many bones. And yeah, so this rice wine is called makoli. It's a very cloudy, ricey, milky drink, but you have a big kick of alcohol. Whoa. It's good. I mean, I'm good right now. This market is extremely diverse. Like I showed you before, grocery stores, you have like shoe vendors that like you have right here, you have food stalls. Then you also have like a seafood market with some of the freshest seafood you can get in the city. Look at this. You have clams, you have oysters, you have crabs, octopus. Everything's so fresh. You have live fish right here. You have even, oh my God, he has so many tanks back there. Whoa, I didn't even see that. It's extremely diverse and really amazing. Wow, oh my God, even look at this. More rice cakes. I'm good with rice though. The land of rice, but I'm good. Next up, we're trying some samgyapso, which is pork belly, Korean barbecue pork belly. This guy just uh, made us some delicious samples right here. Sorry, what's your name? Alex, Alex. Alex, American, American Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Korean American, American. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Whatever comes first. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Oh, I love this. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh, wow. Isn't that good? Mm. Delicious. Dude, super tender, the burst of fat explodes, super juicy. Oh, it's like Korean barbecue is so freaking good. Look at that, it's just, as you can see, oh my God. It's I'm gonna just take a picture. Yeah, dude, buddy, yeah, no I problem, no problem. Oh, thanks. It's, it's really hot right now, he just like put it on the, on the grill, he uh, cooked it, and here we have it. Man, you guys have to come to this stall. It's right in the center, right next to the, like, the intersection in the center of the market. Mm. Mm. Hey. It's good, right? Phenomenal. We love it. Like, phenomenal. We love it. Oh my god. Dude, okay, so how much for, for the, the big uh, piece? We sell it for about 500 grams, okay. metric grams, for 10,000 won. So around like $9. Oh, so that's wow. amazing. That's a great, that's a great yeah, price. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper than a restaurant. A little bit more than your, you know, your... Yeah, your meat place, but then like, you know, we're doing all the work. We're putting it in the oven, we cook it about 80%. Okay. So we refrigerate it, and you can actually take it home and just cook the rest of the 20%. Uh, it's kind of like, it's not a big thing, 
but just that small detail wow. like where people don't have to cook as long and you know it's yeah. not as greasy exactly. you know and the smell it's like you know that's our that's our selling point perfect yeah dude it's amazing one of a kind one of a kind amazing absolutely amazing like, amazing amazing <laughs> Oh wow, so we came to the end of the market and yeah. there's actually another market so it extends even longer and it's called like the the World Cup market. Something like the World Cup market, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean this this place is really endless. I mean so much action right now. People are coming here buying fruits, buying vegetables. Somebody came in on her bicycle, she literally bought, bought some fish, live fish yeah. in a bag, put it in her bike and rode off. It's amazing, man. It really is. You get people watch here all day long, and there's just so many, there's so much variety in terms of the shops here. You've got it's so random. You've got street food. You've got fruit. You've got stationery. You've got. I mean, there's someone selling shoes right behind. I know. Us. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> like, everything's here. I mean, the, the coolest thing for me is is just seeing the uh, the you know the differences. You know, yeah, the yeah. fruit right here. Yeah. Seafood right here. It's almost never like that. It's just like a fruit market. Yeah. A vegetable market. A seafood market. A, you know, a meat market. Whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, you were saying, how many markets are here in Seoul? Oh my gosh, so I think basically in every neighborhood there's a market like this. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're traveling here. Maybe you don't have to seek out the more touristy ones. Check to see if you have a market in your local neighborhood. Exactly. Always try to go to where the locals yeah, yeah. are. That, that will be the better experience, for sure. Absolutely, 100%. Let's go eat some more. Let's go. Chicken? Yeah, chicken. Oh, go. Go. Oh. That's amazing. Oh, that's, that's for you. That's for you. You gonna eat it? Wow, so nice. We got service duck. A sweet chili taste. Mmm. Not too soy. Yeah, so what happens in Korea is when somebody likes you, they usually give you service, which is like a gift. Oh man. Mmm. Mmm. I like that one more, man. That rice cake with the sweet, better than the spice. Oh, way better than the spice. Alright, so we couldn't leave this market without trying some KFC, Korean fried chicken. This is by far the best fried chicken on the planet. I'm sorry to everybody in Kentucky, I'm sorry to anybody in America, but this is so good. And this guy right next to us, the, the vendor, super nice guy. He actually gave us some free dogs, some free rice cakes. He has eight different variations of chicken right here. You got spicy, you got sweet, you have some other sauces, but we decided to go with a spicy sauce. Oh right, wow, and it's a big chunk. Mm. Yeah, super juicy, crunchy. Oh my god, the flavor in here is so unreal. It's sweet, it's sour, and spicy. It's not crazy spice. It's spicy for Korea, you know? Mmm. Oh my god, this is so good. It's like if I live in Korea, I have to eat this at least once a day. Mm. Sorry, mama. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. Come to this vendor. Nice guy. <laughs> oh, man. Our adventure here at the Mangwon Market has come to an end right where it started, at the very entrance. We walked the entire market. We tried so many delicious things. I gotta say though, between the pork belly and the deep fried chicken, this country is just blowing my mind with this food. I mean, I thought pork belly was good in Texas, this like destroys it, <laughs> like straight up. It's wow. so good here. It's yeah. just different. The stuff they you know the marinate with is so unique. And then the deep fried chicken. I mean KFC all the way. Korean fried chicken every single day. It's so different. It's it just has a taste that I've never tasted before. The difference in the chicken is that it's super fresh and the sauces are really like mouth watering. They're so good. They're either spicy or sweet. You can't go wrong with either one. And yeah, I mean the market's really incredible. Super friendly locals, everybody wanted to talk to us, they wanted to know what we were doing, and they really enjoyed having us film. So guys, next time you come to Seoul, South Korea, come to this market, extremely local, and you will love the experience. If you love this video, thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to both our channels, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace! Good evening everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in bustling Seoul, South Korea. Tonight we're gonna be exploring the Hyundai area and this is like an entertainment district. We have lots of shops, 
we have street food, we have restaurants, Korean and Western. And as you can see, lots of youth here. Everybody's like 20 and under, let's say 25 <laughs> and under. A lot of youth because there's a lot of universities in the area. And what we're doing tonight is we're gonna explore, we're gonna go shopping, and we're gonna go eat some Korean food. I don't know exactly what we're gonna eat. We're just gonna look around and see what looks good. And I'm sure we're gonna try some delicious craft beer from Korea. You know, all the youth, there has to be good beer here. There all right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's go explore Hyundai. Right. All right, guys, so as you can see, Entertainment District, we got some games. We're gonna just uh, throw some darts, see if I win anything. 5,000 for seven shots. All right, I'll try it. 5,000. Any balloon. Any balloon. One two. Make one, I get this. Make four, I get one of those. Make seven, get one of these. You feeling confident? Yeah, let's, let's. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a while. Oh. Oh, dude. One. one. Two. Two. Ah. Oh. Three. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh dude. So three. Anything from there? Can I see? Let me see. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. You did well, man. I did well, right? Yeah. I didn't bring a bag. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be carrying that all night. Oh, my God. Why did this happen? <laughs> I guess look at this. Is this Korean? Okay, okay. It's Korean. It's Korean? What's oh, Korean? Yeah. Totoro, Totoro. 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 Okay. Totoro. I'll take this one. That was you, awesome. What's the name? Totoro? Totoro. 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 Okay. Let you me got tie Totoro. him. Where am I tying him to? Right there? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. So she got like two, so she gets to get one of those. Yeah. This guy's being very nice. He's letting everybody get the bigger ones. Yeah, so I'm gonna walk around with this. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy a backpack. <laughs> you need one, huh? This is crazy. Dude, this is fun. It's fun. This, this is like a, an awesome area. It's a super fun area. Yeah, just the beginning of it. It sprawls out in all directions. Hongdae is actually pretty big. And um, man, Hongdae is so big that I remember there was one bar when I came here a lot, many years ago where they had four different versions of it. It was like, I, I, I actually think it was called the Ho Bar. It was like Ho Bar 1, 2, 3, and 4. Oh my God. It's hilarious, man. Dude, I'm so excited. This is super fun. This is what the funnest part about Korea is that you have this type of stuff. I don't see this anywhere else in the world. No. Right? Like you go through an area, restaurants, street food, this is, games. This is pure fun. Pure fun. The performance was sick. That was K-pop, oh, right? K-pop. Uh, it was like K-pop. I think it was a little bit of a. It's break, like break dancing. There's a, there's a word for that. Yeah, there's but they were but that. they weren't break dancing. They were just no, like no, doing no. a certain. They're, uh, they're just doing the thing. Oh my god! And then you cross the street, and it's another street. It's lit up. It's lit up. Wow. Keeps going, dude. But you think there's food over here? Uh, Restaurants. Yeah, they've got everything over there, man. Are you sure you're about the barbecue? <laughs> we can always go back. We can always go back. Let's go check out this place first. Okay. <laughs> The street has souvenirs, phone covers, street food, lots of lights, but it's starting to rain, so we're gonna go look for a restaurant. I think we're gonna eat what? Gobi? I think we're gonna have pulgo pulgogi. Pulgogi? Pulgogi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We tried that just very briefly with uh, that big Korean royal feast we had like over a week ago. Okay. I've never had a dedicated pulgogi meal. Let's Should go. We? Let's do it. All right, so we just sat down at the restaurant, and this is like a super packed restaurant. Very cozy, as you can see, and they have bulgogi, marinated beef, Korean style, and we have it right here. Check this out. Whoa, it's big. Oh my god. Oh man, I can't wait. I got my soju. Love it. 20% alcohol. So good. <laughs> got some rice right here. Some rice with some seaweed. 
and we have a delicious like seaweed soup. Oh, everything looks fire. Then I'm gonna start with the soup and some soju. So open this up. Alright, this is how it works. Getting a little help too. Yeah, yeah. She comes, she helps. Try some. Mm. Oh wow. Mmm, nice. I love it. It's like vodka, but smoother. Smooth. Now let me let me show you this. So I'm gonna serve myself a little bit of seaweed. Sandwich is when people drink or you know, this is what people eat on their birthdays here. Yeah, correct? yeah, it's called miyuku. Miyuku. Yeah. Mm. It's like a lucky soup, I think. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Seaweed. Yeah, nice light broth. What's really cool about this dish is that it's like covered in bean sprouts. Yeah. Wow. So many sprouts. So like, many sprouts. Where's where's the beef? The beef the beef is kinda hidden. Gumbe! Gumbe! Match the soil? Match the soil. Alright, alright. <laughs> oh, let's eat. Okay, dude, this is ready to eat. The lady came by and said it was finished. What she did was she added some nice thick noodles, mixed it around. And so, yeah, we've got a delicious bread. It's like basically we have the, the bean sprouts, which are called gong namul in Korean. We have rice cakes, we have uh, noodles, and, and beef, of course. So, I'm gonna try the beef on its own right now. Oh man. Got some noodles. Bulgogi. Mmm, the bulgogi is next level. So tasty. Look at those, nice and big, long. <laughs> mm. Oh man. Big and thick. The nice thing is that the noodles really absorb the sauce. So, very flavorful. Mm, I love this sauce. It's not overly spicy. A little bit of a kick. It's actually a bit more sweet than it's, than, than spicy, I'd say. I love it though, I love it. And here we go, the bulgogi. We got these delicious noodles. Ho ho ho! We have the rice cake, we have sprouts, never ending sprouts, and we have the beef. The best thing to do is just go in, grab a big mix, right? That's a little too much sprouts there. Oh, get some of that. And here we go, let's try this. Oh, whoa. Oh, it's so good. It's not spicy at all. It's real sweet. Mm. I love how crunchy the, the sprouts are. Oh, and the rice cake in there as well. I didn't even know that was there until I bit into it. Look at that, man. The beef is freaking delicious. And it's, it has it actually does have a little bit of a kick, but it just tingles in your, your upper lip. Mm. And these noodles remind me of like buckwheat noodles that I have in China. And man, what a dish. And I love that we're, that we're sharing it here, you know, instead of having our own dish. Yeah, yeah. It's better like this. Korean, then, Korean food is very communal. Yeah, another thing, almost like China, because China, every single thing you eat is shared. But here, the great thing is that you always have it in the middle on top of a little fire. Always. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Oh, let me get a little more. Oh, so many sprouts. And that section is too hot. Dude, uh, gumbe, gumbe. 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 Hey. Oh man, sold you all day. Right, so we're about to move on to phase two. Look at this guys, this is the bokumbap, the rice. We got the seaweed, we got cheese. It's gonna be all mixed in. Uh, okay. So can't wait. Oh, oh man, that's like. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, chop, chop. It's funny, dude. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. Matcha soil. Matcha soil. Yeah, matcha soil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, oh and the soup? Oh, wow. Meal cook. Meal cook. Meal cook. cook. Dude, that's gonna be next level. Sauce. Sauce. What is this? Mix, mix. Mmm. I'm so sorry. I'm so sure. <laughs> 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 I said the smell. The smell is good. It smells amazing. Mm. Can we ask you for some spice? Some spicy. Mm. I don't know. You're both spicy? More spicy? Oh, more spicy. More spicy. Okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. 
All right, so she came and made the rice. It's incredible. First, she chopped up the remaining ingredients that we had. Then she added the rice in, grabbed a little bit more spicy sauce, and then we're melting the cheese on top. She said, cook it for a minute. It's gonna be ready. It's gonna be so good, man. I can't wait. And one thing they always do is they spread it out so it's all even, and then at the bottom it burns. The burnt rice is the best part. The best part. The best thing about Korean fried rice is they dump cheese on top. I mean, it just changes the whole game. This is so good. I love how she spread it around. It's crispy on the bottom. All the flavors, look at that. I mean, you got noodles, you have sprouts, you have beef, you have cheese, you have rice cake, you have rice. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh man. So I'm gonna go in here and grab some of this. Woo! Mix it with some more. Mm. Dude, the amount of flavor in there is insane. A little spice, we ask her for some more spice. It's perfect though, not too hot. Mmm, tastes of seaweed, I love seaweed. Yeah. I love it. It's the best. So good, super fresh. The rice, obviously the country of rice. We have the noodles. I mean, everything's so good. I think I have to get some more cheese though. Ooh, like that, oh, it's like. Oh, oh wow. I mean, come on, sorry dude. <laughs> Oh wow. I'm gonna say it. Fried rice in Korea is better than China. <laughs> I'm serious though. Oh yeah. Nobody does fried rice better than Korea. I mean, no one adds this many different ingredients. I think that's the key. Because people add like, you know, carrots, corn, uh, chicken, yeah. pork, but they don't do this. Oh. Wow. Mm. The cheese, man. The, the cheese. cheese. The cheese for the win. Oh. Mmm. It's too much, it's too yeah, much. Too good, too good. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna keep going. What a feast, man. That was insane. That food just like, it kept coming and coming. It's so cool to do the bokum bop too. Total price with 36,000 won for everything, including the alcohol. It's incredible value. I mean, basically 18,000 won per person. You're looking at about 15 US dollars, 15, 16 US dollars for all that meat, all those noodles, all that rice and the beer, and the soju, that's insane value. Loved it. When I have like sushi in Miami, I'll spend easily with my wife 60 to 70 US dollars if I get some sake. Oh my gosh. So this, in Korea, Number priceless. one, priceless. number one deal. Dude, it's priceless. Priceless. I mean, yeah, there's a price, but it's priceless. It's priceless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I found another guy who's doing the same thing, basically darts, darts. Oh. Oh, yeah. two, three, oh, oh, dude. Oh! oh. Nice. Let's That's see. it, dude. Can I, I want the monkey, man. <laughs> Nine. Nine. Ah! <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I think my daughter's going to love it. Memory for life, dude. That's great. So, so many bars, so many places where you can get chicken, Korean barbecue. But we're specifically looking for craft beer, so we're gonna walk one more block, and I think that's where we're gonna find it. And the reason we're drinking craft beer is because the other beer is water. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're beer snobs now. The dolphin made me do it. The dolphin made you do it. <laughs> okay, so I looked at this place called Ale Crew Craft Beer Tap House. Craft beer in Korea. Let's go. Oh yeah, look at this. Dude, they're all the tanks. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir, right here. Okay. Cheers! Come You got the chime. <laughs> what are you having? Uh, I'm having, well, it's sold out, but it's a IP, uh, slow IPA. So they're so nice. They, they just had this much left. They gave it to me and they allowed me to replace my beer. So basically, I get one and a quarter. The chime white triple. So it's a Belgian triple. If you guys don't know about that, it's Belgian, like, it's, it's the strongest beer they make. What is this? 8%, pretty good. Oh, also the most expensive. It is the most expensive. It's like $12, but look at that head. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 bro. Is that, is that this, good? This is, this is like, a, this is a man's beer. This is a life-changing beer? This is Belgian. Belgian, Belgian beers are the best. Gumbe. Gumbe. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's delicious. Amazing craft beer spot. They got Korean beer on draft, all craft. They got everything. Imperial style, porter, ale, wheat ale, triple, Belgian triple. I mean, they got everything you could ever want. They also have other beers from other countries right here in bottles. And I love the setting. I mean, everybody's here, very young, casual, just drinking, eating some food. And outside, they have like a garden. Dude, this place is sick. This place is really cool. And I highly recommend coming here when you come to this area. Just a more chill spot. Very, like, a lot less people in this area. Uh, it's separated from like the main strip. And yeah, cheers. Dambe all day. All day. Mm. What a fantastic place though. Awesome. Great way to end off the night of home day. Very young, very modern. Whoa, delicious craft beer. Dude, seriously. Korean style. Amazing. I love the atmosphere, love the taste, love the location too. Dude, thank you for bringing me here. This is awesome. Like yeah. I this, I think this is my favorite spot in Seoul. Yeah. I mean so much, the best. so much youth. Yeah. Lots of things to do. I mean, I played some darts. Yeah. We ate some food. We saw some like uh, some people doing K-pop. Like yeah, dancing, yeah. Right? There's always performances on the street. Thing is, this is there's so much to do in this area. You could come back here. I swear, if you lived here, you could come back here every weekend and find a new place to eat, a new place to drink. Yeah. And yeah. What, what was the name of the food we had? Oh, we had the uh, bulgogi. Bulgogi. So good. Oh, yeah. that was unreal. I mean, the coolest thing is that like, you know. You have a dish and it's like, yeah. that's not your dish. Cause it mixes with rice and then they make it something else. And it's oh, like, man. oh wow. It never ends. It never ends. And we came here, had some craft beer. I mean, good nightcap and yeah, so much youth. So much youth. I mean, yeah. if you're in your mid twenties, you have to come to this area. <laughs> Dude, it makes me want to roll the clock back 10 years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's not tell you our age. Yeah, we don't need to know. We're, we're, I'm a dad. Yeah. He's gonna be a dad. I'm, I'm, I'm older than you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, if you love this video, give us a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you on the next travel adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Oh man, I love this country. Let's go. It's so good. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm going to take you to eat a delicious porridge breakfast. Here in South Korea, they love porridge. They have so many different variations. I think I'm going to go with one that's a little spicy with some shrimp. And I'm also going to get some kimchi fried rice, bibimbap. Oh my god, it's so delicious. The fried rice here really rivals China. It's like right there with China. Super good. And then after this, we're gonna go to another palace. There's so many palaces here, but this one is UNESCO World Heritage. Now let's go inside and try some Korean porridge. Okay guys, so here we have it, our breakfast feast. You know, here in South Korea, we've been eating so many delicious things for breakfast, and every single time it's been different. You know, we've had bibimbap, now we're having porridge, we're having kimchi, it's called bopimbap, right? Bopimbap, yeah, kimchi fried rice. Bopimbap, kimchi fried rice. That looks freaking phenomenal. It looks a little spicy, lots of vegetables, got the cabbage. And then here we have my porridge. What I decided to go with was shrimp with some seaweed. Doesn't look too spicy, just looks perfect. I actually like porridge a lot. Um, it's a very healthy dish. It's easy to eat. And yeah, here in South Korea, they love it. Here they have like, I think like 50 variations. Really amazing. And then here we have the banshees, right? All on the sides. Yeah. So we have the white radish, like super cold soup. Then we have white radish right here. Then we have, this is like marinated beef. It looks really yummy. And then we have something that looks really hot. This could be like fish. I don't know exactly what it is, but it looks really, really hot. It's the only thing that looks spicy out of everything. Let's try this. Okay, wow. I'm so hungry, can't wait to eat. This reminds me of like a risotto. Mmm. It's almost the same as like a yummy shrimp risotto. Mmm. Oh, very moist. Lots of rice in there. Mmm. Big pieces of shrimp. A lot of seaweed. Like, I, I'm pretty surprised that it's like this much seaweed. Here in Korea, they love the seaweed. Mmm. Mmm. No spice at all. Oh man, this is really good. It, it's pretty amazing they eat a lot of rice for breakfast. I mean, it is a country of rice, but I, I was a little shocked when it was like breakfast rice. I don't really do that in the States, you know? Mmm. It's so good. Can't wait to finish it, but before I finish it, 
Let's jump into the banshees. Right here, I'm gonna try this super cold soup. Oh, mm, yeah, a little sweet. Oh wow, also a little, little of a, a kick right there. Mmm. We gotta go with a nice crispy onion, a few chilies in there, a little spicy. Now let me jump onto the white radish. This is what I love about Korean food, is that they always give you amazing sides. Here we have some of this. Mmm. That was strong this one. Oh, very moist. Pretty good. Next up, we have the marinated beef. Oh wow. Mmm. Oh, packed with flavor. Oh wow. Soy sauce. Super wet. Mmm. Not wet guys. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> Super moist. Oh, I really like this one. Mmm. It's like bathed in soy sauce. Incredible. And next up we have this red one. Mm hmm It's like mixed seafood in here. Mmm. Oh, I said, I can't get enough of this red paste sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Feel like some octopus in there. Maybe some fish. Very salty. It's actually my favorite of all these. Wow. It's amazing. I'm gonna try some of this kimchi fried rice. Oh, wow. So good. Mmm. Oh wow, incredible. So much flavor, mmm. Man, for real, this rivals China's fried rice. And I've actually never had a spicy fried rice. This is my first spicy one. Mmm, you get a little bit of that tingling on your, you know, your lips. You get a lot of veg. Oh. I love this one, man. I love it. Mmm. It's one of the best fried rice on the planet right here. Just the spice, all the veg, no meat in there. Pretty damn good. And yeah, guys, this is basically our huge breakfast. What we're gonna do now is just dig in, relax, fill up before the palace, and yeah, gambe. <laughs> mm. All right, David, this breakfast feast has been incredible. And we each ordered different jukes. So you got one that had shrimp and seaweed. I got one that had puff, which is Korean red beans. So this is really tasty. Uh, it's got tons of rice in there. Now the difference between yours and mine is that mine has a, a, a little bit of more of rice balls. I don't think you got the rice balls, you got the shrimp. But these are my rice balls. So I'm gonna take a bite with the rice balls. Mm. Mm. The texture of the rice balls is so soft and chewy, but it does take a little while to chew it enough so that you can swallow it down. Now the red beans in Korea are typically something you add with sugar, so it's a bit sweet. But this porridge, because it's natural and healthy, has, doesn't have any extra sugar or sweetener added. So you're tasting more of the natural red bean taste, and it's actually not sweet. It's more of a savory dish, which I find really interesting. Take one more bite. Mm. And something I should mention about juke for, for everyone who's watching is that this is typically a very healthy Korean food. Often people who are, are sick or having digestive issues will eat the juke as a way of recovering your health because it's just so simple and easy to digest and also very healthy. All healthy ingredients. Wow, dude. Filling. Filling, filling. All the rice in the world for breakfast. Bit of a carb overload. Good thing we're going to be going for a walk for a bit. We're going to go to Seoul Station. And then we're going to the palace and we'll be doing lots of walking too. Yeah, and this restaurant is located right next to Seoul Station. I mean, we're literally a block away. Oh, just notice it's exit four. Exit four? Yeah, exit four across the street. Perfect. And the bill was what? 20... 20 something thousand. 24,000. 24,000. It's not bad. So it was like, I think the most expensive thing was actually the fried rice. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. Which is fine. It's the best it was thing. Good. <laughs> it was good. Everything was good, man. Yeah, now we're going to do it. Like I said, catch a taxi and go straight to the palace. Let's go.
after a short 10 minute taxi drive, we made it here to Chengdukung Palace, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that dates back to 1405. This was the main residence to many of the Jason Kings, and there's two parts of the palace. So there's the main buildings, and then there's a secret garden. If you just want to see the palace, it's 3,000 won, so very affordable. If you want to go to the secret gardens, that's an extra 5,000. So it'll be 8,000 total, which is roughly $7 to see a UNESCO World Heritage Palace here in Seoul. Wow, that is so worth it. Let's go inside and see the palace. Hello. Want some of that? Thank you. Want some of that? All right, so we've just got inside and already noticing it's very spacious. Lots of trees, lots of traditional Korean buildings. Something I should mention too that I think you find interesting is that you can get a 10,000 won pass. It gives you access to all the palaces in Seoul. Or you can put on traditional Korean handbook, which allows you to get into all of these palaces for free. So consider those two options if you're visiting Seoul and you want to check out the palaces. Something I haven't mentioned though is that this palace has over 26,000 species of trees. Wow. Did you know that? No, I did not. Now you know. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> One thing I just learned in the brochure is that the royal family love this palace the most. Reasons why? Well, it's very relaxing, as you can see. Very spacious, lots of green trees, lots of air. I mean, just beautiful. I mean, this is so awesome. And many gates, lots of gates. There's a bridge right here. And then behind, obviously, we have the secret garden, which is like double the size of the palace. This building is beautiful. It's called the Chung John Hall. This is where the king was coronated. His throne is right there in the very back and they would use it to throw royal ceremonies. And in front you have this massive, massive terrace and in the backdrop you can see Seoul Tower, all of Seoul, the Seoul skyline. And yeah, amazing spot. I mean, the breeze in here, I feel like it's super cool. And the coolest part about Seoul is that you have all these palaces, but they're all completely different. Each one has its own history, and in terms of architecture, very, very unique here. So to visit the main hall, we had to go around to the left. We couldn't use the main staircase because that is reserved for royalty. In every single palace, in some buildings, you'll see the staircase in the middle, and that's reserved for royalty. I mean, obviously now there's no real royalty. I mean, I'm, I don't know if there is anymore, yeah. but they always have it like separated. You can never go up it, especially in some Buddhist temples as well, right? Yeah, same thing, same thing. So we're visiting the next residence over here. We noticed a smaller hall, and it has uh, like basically blue tiles. It's very, very fascinating from a distance as you approach it you realize that it's smaller we're thinking maybe it's like a, a royal residence or a royal sleeping grounds inside they have a nice painting and then there's some mats and uh, yeah it's just very basic inside could have been a place to sleep could have been a place to eat or hang out or all of the above yeah there's no bed no. there's like a little uh like i guess it's like a couch right but it's yeah. very very low yeah. there's some mats there so I'm guessing back then the kings would sleep on the floor the same way we did it with like in the in a temple, right? So they would yeah. put the mats down, lay on the floor, always very low to the ground. Yeah, which is actually really comfortable. Wow! Hi. Look at you girls, Hi. beautiful, love it. You are Japanese. Japanese. Nice handbook. Yeah. Love the handbook. Thank you. Where are you guys? Where, where are you from? Korea. Are you from Korea? <laughs> yeah, you're from Korea. Oh no! No 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 no. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Wow, what a morning. Good morning. We started it off with some delicious porridge yep. and kimchi fried rice. Super filling. Super filling. I highly recommend trying it once. You yes. don't need it twice though. No. <laughs> no. I mean if you really like it, you can get you can get it every single morning because they have so many different variations. Yeah. He had like a red bean one. I had a shrimp and sea, which is so delicious. It was like literally eating the sea right there. It was yeah, so good. So good, man. And then we came here to Chongdechuk. Yeah, Chongdechuk. Chongdechuk. Really fun, the palace. I mean, it's getting packed now. Yeah. These kids just flooding Everywhere. in at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, so it, you know, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so I highly recommend coming to this palace. If you have time for two or three, definitely this one, yeah. the one we did the other day, yeah. and uh, there's like a dozen, man. It's crazy how many there are. Yeah, you could do a whole tour of it. You can, yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. You could just so do many palace. in Seoul. They're all in different locations, too. Yeah. Which makes it fascinating. But they're usually by parks, Yeah, right? by parks. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. This will be Sam's last episode with me. Yeah, so, man, I'm uh, gonna miss you, bro. We'll probably see him in Argentina soon. I hope so. You're <laughs> welcome anytime. For sure. Well, guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, his channel, and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in South Korea. Peace. Hey.
Hey, good afternoon everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, sunny Seoul, South Korea. Today I'm super excited because I'm taking you to the fifth tallest building in the world. It's called the Lotte World Tower. Check that out, it's so tall. Huge building, 123 floors, 1,821 feet high. It has the highest glass bottom observation deck in the world. It has the highest swimming pool in the world. It has a hotel, offices, a five-story mall, lots of restaurants, Western and Korean. And across from the mall, there's two lakes with a park. This is one of them. As you can see, lots of people just walking around, eating lunch. And yeah, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore the tower. We're going up to the observation deck, but before that, we're gonna go eat some Korean food. I'm so hungry, I'm so excited. Are you guys ready? Let's go explore the fifth tallest building in the world, the Lotte World Tower. You know, a lot of people might come to the tower and go straight up to the observation deck. I highly recommend coming to one of the lakes and getting views of the tower. I mean, this is amazing. People are just walking around, lots of breeze, and just the view is epic. The view is so sick. Look at that. I can't even like believe how tall it is. I've been in the second tallest building in the world, the Shanghai Tower. But this one just, I mean, it's unique. I love the glass. The glass is so awesome. And what a mall. Look at the mall. I don't think it's five story. I think it's taller than that. So let's finish up here at the lake. And let's go straight to the tower and eat some food. So, <laughs> sorry, I keep making stops here because there's so many beautiful views here in the lake. I highly recommend coming to this spot. It's the southern western part of the lake. You have this incredible view. I mean, it's a little harsh with the light right now, but man, the images are just incredible. I've been taking so many beautiful photos. Everybody's stopping here to get selfies. Yeah, I mean, just, it's mesmerizing. And one thing that I noticed right now is that in the middle, it's sort of like, like this, like separates, and it actually looks like a building from one of the movies in Star Wars. I mean, it actually looks like multiple uh, buildings from Star Wars. Uh, I forgot which planet it was, but yeah, it's definitely inspired by Star Wars. All right, enough talking. It's 1 p.m., let's go eat. Walking around the lake took me around 25 minutes and I stopped, got some images, talked on camera. I mean, really small lake, it's not that big. As soon as I crossed the street, I got here to the mall and the tower. As you can see, the tower is a monster. What a beast, all glass. And right in front of it says right here, tallest building in South Korea, third tallest building in Asia, fifth tallest building in the world. 555 meters so 1819 feet high and then it shows you other towers that compare to it and everything else looks very small in comparison so wow all right let's go to the first level of the mall and see if i can find some beeping bop i want a rice dish i want to fill up oh i love korean food restaurants what do we have just gotta find some korean food there's restaurants on every level there's actually eight levels here and uh, I'm thinking, first level, is there anything? Nature Pop, the on now. Might have to go upstairs. Let's go. All right, so I entered the wrong side of the mall because the first level here is just all luxury boutiques. So let me go to the other side. I'm sure this is where the restaurants are. It has to be. I just went up to the information desk and I asked them, you know, where are the restaurants? They said there's a few down here on the first floor, but go to the fifth floor if you really want Korean food. So I'm gonna go to the fifth floor, is the elevator right over here? Okay, here it is. Okay, so this elevator is pretty amazing. Look at this, all glass, and you can see the skyline. So sick. Here on the fifth floor, there's an area called Soso 3080, which is like a big food court area with lots of Korean restaurants. I came here to this restaurant, which I heard is really good, called Hankook Jib, and they have a lot of beef and bops, and they also have like big set menus, which are beef and bop with like beef on the side, and then a few different sides, the banshees. I think I'm going with the dosa beef and bop set, which comes with beef and bop, a big rice bowl, four sides, and then a fifth extra dish of beef. And here we go. So I got the beef and bop, four sides, and the fifth, which is beef, right? And the way you do this is you start to mix this up. Ooh, it's super hot. It's still sizzling down there. So this beef and bop has a lot of things. It has um, seaweed, it has radish, it has mushrooms, it has hot sauce, it has cucumbers, it has beef, it has onions. I mean, it's a never ending beef and bop. Oh my God. The funny thing is that in this restaurant, I'm the only tourist. No one else is tourist. It's pretty amazing. Oh. All right, so let's dig in. Mm. Oh yeah. So much flavor. Mm. 
Wow, the hot sauce is really spicy. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, it's been really, it's been burning on the bottom, all the rice, so you get like that super crispy taste. Mm. Oh, this is the best green bar I've had. It's just so many different flavors, so many ingredients. Mm. Yeah, I highly recommend getting the beef bop when you come to Lotte World Tower. Oh, you would love it. This is probably my favorite dish in all of Korea. Oh, it's just so good. And there's so many variations. Like, you don't have to get it like this, like crazy like this. And you can also get it like with egg on top. Mm. The marinated beef, delicious. All right, so I'm not gonna finish that yet because I finished all the bop, then I won't be able to even touch the sides. All right, so next up I'm gonna try the olive banshees, right? Right here we have like a radish with like a super hot sauce. Let's try this. Mm. Oh, very crispy. Mm. Love the love the heat. <clears throat> but next up we have like some beans. I haven't tried beans yet. This is different. Can't even get it. Oh wow, it's like rock hard beans. Mm. Once you get into the middle, it's a little mushy. Nice, like black beans. And over here we have, oh, my favorite thing ever, the kimchi. Wow, ultra spicy, like super spicy. And then right here, we have some like marinated beef. It actually looks like beef from like hot pot. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, so tender, so juicy, very moist. Mmm, like butter this one. I think the best part about this lunch, and it cost me 14,000 won, so huge, in the, one of the most like touristic spots in the city, maybe in the, even in the country, and you're spending like 12 US dollars for lunch. I mean, I spent this automatic in Miami, so I think it's affordable. Oh yeah, it's good. They also put some chilies there too. Give it a little kick. Wow guys, that was an extremely filling meal at Han Kung Jeep in the Seoul Seoul 3080 food court area. So delicious. I mean, there's so many restaurants there, but I recommend going to that one because it has this amazing, authentic Korean food. Now I'm going down to the first level and I'm going to the observation deck. Let's do this. Lotte World Tower. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited, so excited. To enter the observation deck, you have to go down to B1, so basement level one, and here we go. Observation deck, look at this. Guinness World Record for the Sky Shuttle, which is like their elevator. The tallest double-deck elevator is the Sky Shuttle. The fastest double-deck elevator is the Sky Shuttle. The highest class floor observation deck is the Sky Deck. Guys, I can't wait. I'm pumping you guys up. Let's do this. Tickets, tickets. Let's see, tickets are like, uh, what is it? What are you doing? So we just bought the ticket and it costs 27,000 won. So roughly like 23 US dollars, not bad. Once you pass security, you take escalators down and then here there's like a small exhibition hall and it shows you what they use to build the building. Steel reinforcing bars and copers, wow, it's huge. Look at this, the rock excavation near the foundation of the tower, huge rocks, and then the top, the lantern, the uppermost lantern part. Let's go before everybody beats me to the top. That was so weird because they made us go down to go back up, but I'm guessing because we had to exit, you know, into the mall and then go back into the building. And yeah, there's a lot of people coming, so I'm just gonna try to hurry up. Yeah, I don't want the crowds. How fast? One minute. One minute? Only one minute? Wow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, it only takes one minute to do almost 1,700 feet. Whoa, we're there. Wow, look at this. Huge. Oh my God, what a view. The Han River, this is just unreal. I couldn't have come on a better day. Like, it's super crystal clear. 
Whoa! We got all the helipads, so many helipads. And over there is Gangnam. Gangnam is the, the area where Gangnam Style is from, you know? Dun, 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 dun. This is super unreal. So we're right now at 478 meters, the sky deck. This is just epic. All the bridges, towers, holy smokes. And over there we see Seoul Tower. That's the one I went to yesterday. This is just crazy, crazy high right now. Oh my God. Remember I told you they had the highest glass bottom observation deck in the world? Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> this is really scary, but what you should do is just straight up lay down here. Oh, whoa. Scary. It will never fall. It will never fall. Oh my god. <laughs> this is super fun. This puts to shame every single observation deck I've been to in my life. Just going here, having the glass bottom, looking down, and just like <laughs> being very, very scared. Everybody's like super scared to lay down. I don't mind it. I know like this will not break at all. You know, millions of people have already come here, so it will not break. It's super thick glass. Yeah, but it, it still is a, a little scary doing this, you know? Like doing this. <laughs> go, 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 go. No, you're too scared. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> wow, they have a, like a portion of the observation deck outside. Sky Terrace. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow, it's cold. It's nice. So the Sky Terrace is the 120th floor at 486 meters high. And the biggest difference, obviously, is that this one's open air. I mean, really cold up here. I can't even imagine being up here in winter. And you really feel the observation deck like swaying. Like it feels like I'm on a boat right now. A little scary in terms of views same views not a big difference at all obviously only like 30 feet yeah i mean these views are like never ending and you can see how huge Seoul is forever mountains i mean so many mountains we're like in a deep valley with the han river right here lots of bridges and like thousands and thousands of towers just like never ending towers and then over here like next to the lake there's like a you know it's more of a traditional community so it's very small buildings everything's like mid-rises five ten stories you have a big park in the middle there with like stadiums yeah like i think there's like six stadiums right there and then yeah the city just keeps going and going and going i mean massive city i think it's like 25 million Psh, huge Next time you come to Seoul, you have to come to the Lotte World Tower, the fifth tallest building in the world, and go up to that observation deck. The highest glass bottom observation deck in the world is amazing. It's exhilarating. It's really a different experience in terms of observation deck. I've been to so many in my life, and this one is just incredible. I mean, getting on top of the glass, looking down, getting really nervous, and whew, it's just like, whoa, this is like mind blowing. People were like pushing their significant others, little girls, you know, that were like very scared. It, it was really an experience over just going up there and looking at views, right? I mean, the views were insane. Like, you know, wow, 2,000 feet high, just something else in terms of seeing a city. And seeing Seoul from there is like really seeing what Seoul's about. Seoul Tower has an awesome observation deck, but not like this. This is like, you know, on top of the world. I think this is like five or 600 feet higher. So very big difference. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take you somewhere really, really special, somewhere I've been dying to go to for a long time. I'm gonna catch a metro and I'm gonna see you in a jippy. I'm finally in Gangnam. Gangnam is a super posh neighborhood south of the river. That's exactly what it means, south of the river here in Seoul. And it's famous for PSY's song, Gangnam Style. Man, that song was played so much. It got like three billion views on YouTube. It was the number one played video on YouTube for like a few years. And here we have the monument. So when you come to Gangnam, 
You come here, you pose, you do the, you know, with the hands right there. So I just put my legs. Okay. Yeah, you just spread your legs. Knees up. Knees up. Knees up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. That's like 10 years old. Thanks, thanks, guys. Yeah. And that's it, guys. Well, I hope you love this video. We had such an amazing day today. Lotte World Tower, fifth tallest building in the world. Got a little observation deck. You have to go eat in the mall. Then you have to come here and gang them. And if you guys love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace. Good evening everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Myeonggong with my friend Paul from Taste So Good. He makes food videos here in Seoul and he's bringing me here to eat some street food. This is like another entertainment district, lots of bright lights, lots of street food. I mean literally there's like one, two, three, four, five right next to us. And yeah, I mean what else are we going to do tonight? Do I hope you're hungry because Myeongdong is the not only the shopping capital of Seoul, but it is full of street food. This is the street food mecca of the country. So you can get everything from the traditional Korean food to some weird and crazy wacky things. This is where food trends starts right here in Myeongdong so super excited to show you around. I'm excited let's go eat. All right let's go ma'am. A lot of the things here while they are really good it is pretty touristy so it does get super crowded so I usually like to hang out in other parts of the city so if I want more traditional street food I'm gonna go somewhere else but I do come here to check out the new trends because a lot of things are just really crazy here and it's kind of one of the most creative places in Seoul I would say because some things that you see even on BuzzFeed are going to start right here in Myeongdong. Oh, so, wow. yeah, so some things like, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, a few years ago there was these huge ice creams. Okay, yeah. Like foot long ice creams. Yeah, that all started right here. Okay. So, crazy. Yeah, so it's definitely a good place to check out, but don't try to come here too often just because it's uh, not the most authentic place, but still definitely a fun place. It's a place you have to check out. Yeah, no, I mean, I, th I saw it was like top 10 on every list. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're wondering how to get here, Take Seoul Station, Blue Line, North. Mm -hmm. I don't know which direction that is. I know it's north. It's two stops away. Yep, it's very close. You can actually almost walk here. So that's a great thing about it too, is it's so central. So no matter where you're staying, if you're staying in the Itaewon area, if you're staying near Hongdae, all these really cool districts, it's really easy to get here by bus or by subway. All right, so this is called gultare. So gul means honey. So this is an old, like traditional royal food. So he takes a ball of fermented honey that's rock hard and he's able to just stretch it and pull it into over 16,000 strings and then stuffs it with different toppings like almonds and sesame seeds and things like that. So it's pretty delicious, pretty sticky, but a super traditional treat that you can only get at certain places in Seoul. Definitely worth checking out, I think. Okay, so it's basically 60,000 strings of honey. What do you put? Like some nuts? Almonds. Almonds. Whoa, that's insane. It's very good, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Dude, it's so good. I love honey. This is so unreal. So soybean with 60,000 strings of honey, mm -hmm. and then he like packs it with almonds. Dude, almonds and amazing, amazing. And it costs 5,000 for eight? 10. 10, okay, great deal. Uh, Alright, so first off we're going to try this. So this is called mandu. So it's basically a pan-fried Korean style dumpling. So it's got a wonton wrapper. She's grilled it right here on the street, which is super cool. Inside will be pork and different vegetables. So, super excited to try this one out. Yum. Personally, I love dumplings. I think Koreans do them so well. It's a little garlicky. We got some spring onion in there. This is good stuff right here. Yum. My turn to try the mandu. Mandu is so good. Mm. Oh yeah. The pork, onions. Mm. Then what we need is some sauce. Is that for us, this one? Yeah. Think? Oh, right there. Oh yeah. Mm. Some soy sauce, but there's something else in there. I think it's it has spring onions and some other things. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, my favorite so far in terms of mandu is the kimchi one because it's spicy. But this is delicious. It's a great way to start off our street food tour. 
Mm. Yeah. Very oily. <laughs> All right, so the number one snack food or souvenir item that foreigners come to Korea and take back to their country are almonds. So Korea has just come with all these unique almond flavors. So here are just different samples. You got everything from seaweed flavor to caramel to tiramisu, uh, wasabi flavor, which is really interesting. Where is that? This green one over here. Oh my God, let's try that. And do you know fire chicken noodles, I'm sure? Mm -hmm. That's this flavor here. So full dock mat, so it's fire chicken flavor. So this one should be spicy. This one's wasabi. This one's my ultimate favorite. We're gonna try first. Both of us are gonna try the hot one. Ready? Alright. Uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Not so bad. Let's wait a second. This is a Korean thing. Oh. There you go, man. Yeah, I know, I know. Koreans trick you. First, you're like, it's not bad. Three seconds later. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's good stuff, though. Oh. Next is wasabi. Wasabi. I love wasabi. It's all day. sweet wasabi though. Mm -hmm. You feel it it's though. It's got a good amount of wasabi. I really yeah. enjoy that. Oh. Oh. All right, next one we're trying is the best one. He was saying it's the best one. I tried it twice. It's you incredible. You gotta trust me. Cheers, dude. Gambe, gambe on this. Gambe. <laughs> so good. Wow. Pop rocks mixed with almonds. It's like almost like a lemon cheesecake flavor. Good. A little, it's good stuff. That's the number one almond in the world. Probably the most <laughs> like highly dense calorie almond in the world. Ah, but don't tell me that stuff. <laughs> calories don't count when you're in Korea. <laughs> For sure. I really fell in love with the Pop Rocks almonds, so I'm buying a bag. 6,900. Pretty good deal. My daughter's gonna love it. Hopefully she doesn't hate it the first second she pops in her mouth. This <laughs> more size. Okay, big size, then I see it. 20,000 for that? At least one more. How's it look? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. Dude, the I'm Iron Man all the way. Okay, so walking through one of these streets, there's so many streets, but one of them has like a lot of vendors that have the main things that I've tried, you know? You got the sundae, you have the dopoki, you have the oden, you have the pancake, you have the rice cakes with the sausage, you have like uh, lots of different mandus, you have the gimbap, which is like the, the rice rolls. There's so many different things. This one I haven't seen, but I don't know if I can be yeah. that adventurous right now. I just don't want to have a problem. Tomorrow <laughs> I have a flight. So far we've seen very little street food that's diverse. It's, it's coming, it's coming. It's, it's coming, it's coming. But basically this street, as you see, is lit up. Like, wow, it feels like daytime right now, but it's nighttime. <laughs> and uh, lots of retail again, so many different shops. It just really doesn't end. I feel like everything's catered towards women though. I haven't seen like men's shops at all. You? There's really not a whole lot, no. There are a few different department stores, but yeah, it's definitely for ladies, skincare, accessories, things like that. This place also attracts a lot of the K-pop people. So okay. they're coming here for like these K-pop guys. And... Okay. All right, so next up is called Myeongdong Duck Galbi. So duck is literally rice cake. So this vendor has two different flavors. He has a beef and a pork. So we're gonna try the beef one. So it's basically kind of like a Korean hamburger. It's got pieces of rice cake in it. And then he's just yeah. blowtorched the hell out of this thing. So this is gonna be amazing. I'm just putting some type of dry thing on it. I don't know, this smells awesome. <laughs> Next up, like Paul said, we have duck galbi, which is rice cakes mixed up with beef. And then they throw a big amount of cheese. He like noose it with a torch. Oh my God, it's still so hot. Look at this, I can't even grab it. It's like, it's not all oh, right there. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh. Crazy amount of cheese right there. Mmm. The beef is super tender. <clears throat> it is like a it is like a burger with no bun. Love the cheese. I actually like what he put on top. It's like very light spices, not too spicy, but it gives a great flavor. Oh wow. The amount of cheese here is crazy. It's like, a, it's like nuke this thing. Look, uh, it's hard to pick up. Okay, right there, right there. One more bite. Mm. Mm. Wow, I haven't tried Korean burgers yet. This is so bomb. Mm. Dude, I'm in love with this. Oh, and sorry, I'm gonna throw some spice on it. Forgot about that. 
Sit there over here in the side. <laughs> God, see what he's doing right there? Nuking that thing. It's like a sweet and sour with some spice. Super delicious. Costs six thousand. If you don't want cheese, it's five thousand. If you want pork over beef, it's four thousand. All right, it's a little wild, but cops just rolled through here. <laughs> Other cars roll through here too. It's a little scary, so watch out. All right, so right off, this smells amazing. So I can't wait to break into this. So there's different sauces. I know David went with the spicy one, but I love cheese, so I'm gonna try the cream cheese. This is our cream cheese sauce. So it's dripping with grease. All the cheese is kind of getting stuck together, but all right, close enough. All right. Yum. It reminds me of my mom's meatloaf or something like that. Like very comforting. What I feel is like a, it's almost like a minced meat. Mm. Cause they turn it like it's a burger, but then they chop it up a lot, you know? Yeah. So they make it very like thin, like, you know, almost like, almost like grains. It's not grains, but yeah. I mean like very, very small pieces. Yeah, get it all, bro. All right, here we go. This, ah. I think it's seasoned so well. I'm not a huge fan of that cream cheese sauce. A little too sweet, but the burger itself is so good. Can't even really taste the rice cake. The cheese is getting a little cold. It's a little hard to chew, but man, I think some good stuff right here. Next up, we're gonna try some gimbap. I've tried it like two or three different variations, right? But here they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different styles. I might go with the non shell, which is like basically roe fish eggs. They also have cheese, tuna, crab sticks, spam. They have spicy pagodi, they have kimchi, bulgogi, they have squid, they have so many different ones. I just love this. I'm like a huge sushi guy. Rice with seaweed and stuffed with some type of beautiful ingredient. Let's try this one. What do you want? I don't think I have to go for the spicy bulgogi. You want the spicy bulgogi? Yeah. That's here? Yeah. That's right there. Alright, my man. So we're gonna try it. I guess yeah. I'll try it first. Is that okay with you? For sure. That was the one I gave you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh, so good. I love the sticky rice. It's like, like there was a tiny, tiny bit of spice, tiny, tiny. But there's a uh, full of row, beautiful seaweed around it. Seaweed's a little crunchy. I just, I can eat this all day. It's like, I get, like people like French fries. I can pop this all day over French fries. It's so fantastic. All right, so I'm gonna try these spicy bulgogi. So it's a spicy pork. So it smells really good. It smells like sesame oil. That's what they put on the outside of it. Check it out. Mm. The seaweed on the outside, it's called kim. It's just a little bit crispy. Because they're making it right here. It's got just the perfect amount of spice. The pork, so good. Such a simple, like three ingredient food. Mmm, just hits the spots. Got a little bit of carbs, got a little bit of meat. Good stuff right here. The price of the gimbap is six for 5,000, but if you're like us and you just want one or two pieces, she'll sell it to you for 1,000 won each. Pretty good deal, 90 cents, fills you up. I mean, if you have six, you really get full. And remember, it's not sushi, it's gimbap. Next up, I'm trying egg bun. I haven't tried this yet in Korea, but Paul was telling me this is usually a winter dish, and besides winter, it's the only other place you can find it. And it looks really nice. I mean, you see the like super thick bun. On top you got the egg. What else do you have? You have almonds, peanut, and, and sunflower seeds. Okay. Oh my God. It's like a, the bun's very sweet. Really sweet. Mm. I love the egg, but I can't wait for the yolk to pop. Mm. Oh, it, it almost feels like it has custard inside. Like it has that type of sensation, you know? Like egg custard. Usually that's in like Macau. Oh, it's really good. It's gonna be really filling, but what can I do, guys? Mmm. The yolk has been cooked completely. You can see it didn't pop at all. What I like the most is the sunflower seeds. You give it a, like a whole different taste here. So you can see, super fluffy. It looks like custard. But what I think happened is that some of the egg rolled throughout, right? So it has a super soft sensation, but at the same time, it's sweet. 
And for 2-1, you must try this. Next up, we're trying duck kochi, which is basically chicken on a skewer. Lots of chicken. It's 4,000 won, so like $3.85, something like that. It looks amazing. The guy basically cooks it right in front of you. He like nukes it again with a torch, like really cooks it really hardcore. And then you, you pay, you get it, and in front you have six different sauces. You got teriyaki, rib flavor, barbecue, chili, spicy, and hydrogen. So I'm gonna go with some teriyaki flavor, just put it on that one right there. All right. Oh, nice. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh my god. It's the best chicken teriyaki ever. Ever. Mm. The outside is super crunchy. It really like made it crispy. The inside is super juicy. And putting that teriyaki sauce on top for the win, dude. Next up, uh, what should I try? Spicy? I think you gotta go with spicy, man. Alright. Like real spice. Like really, really spicy. It's that tteokbokki sauce, the red chili paste. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. It even says it's spicy bomb flavor, like super spicy. Are they gonna need a chili? Maybe that will calm it down. What do you think? What do you think will calm it down? Barbecue. Or maybe cream cheese. He burned himself again. <laughs> Crazy. That actually helped me out a lot. Barbecue really calmed down the heat. But this chicken is so good. Like I've told you so many times before, KFC Korean fried chicken. Well, it's not fried, but Korean chicken is the best in the world. I think I'm gonna try the teriyaki. You spoke so highly of it, so I'll try the teriyaki sauce. Wow. This brings tears to my eyes, it's so good. Yeah, so, I've had a lot of chicken on a stick like this, but I've never had it with like blowtorch on it. I think that's the key. I think this man right here knows what he's doing. The extra flame on it, keeps the juices in, keeps that outside nice and crispy. Oh yeah, man, I gotta get up for this dude right here. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. All right, so I wanna see who's better at eating the spicy food. So I'm gonna also try the spicy one. We're gonna see if I can handle it better than David because I don't know, I think he kind of overreacted a little bit. Let's we'll see. Another good thing is once you get this part, then you don't want to, you know, shove it in your mouth. You can cut it off here with these oh, little... Oh, wow. So let's try the hydrogen bomb. Oh. That's no joke. <laughs> I love spicy food. I eat a lot of spicy food in Korea. Oh, I can't talk. You gotta try it, ma'am. I try it. You gotta try it. I try it. Uh, uh, you have a flight tomorrow, maybe. You'll okay, okay. It. Let's try the yang yam. It smells really good. Good? This reminds you like the 4th of July. Sitting at home, cooking with some chicken in the backyard, some barbecue sauce. That's what this is. It's like straight up Hunt's barbecue sauce. Okay guys, so, because my mouth is on fire, I decided to stop and try to find some juice. Find a place, they have all these fruits. For 4,000, you get one cup, you can either eat it, or they'll make it into a quick shake, right? It's not really a milkshake, obviously, it's just a straight juice. So refreshing. Oh my God, it just like changed my world. Dude, my mouth is so tingling right now. That was way too spicy. Guys, don't go for the spicy sauces over there. It's crazy spice. Oh, this is amazing. The best way to like end the night. But we're not ending it here. We're gonna take you somewhere really special right now. But right now I'm gonna enjoy this. You guys have a trash can? Thank you. To end this street food tour, we came here to Craft Hands, a craft beer bar that serves delicious Korean craft beers. They also have international beers. They have food. It looks amazing, it's like a mini uh, garden outside, nice terrace. 
Let's go have a beer. After all that walking around, I think it's time to kind of cool down. So I'm gonna go with some beers. I'm gonna go for the Pfizer. I think Dave is going for the IPA. Yeah, please. Can we have one Pfizer? One and one IPA? Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going with the IPA. This is actually a Hans Indian Pale Ale, so it's basically their version of the IPA. Gumbe! Oh, smooth. Hoppy, but not like crazy hoppy. Oh, this is great. Yours good? It really is. It's exactly what you need after all that walking in Myeongdong. All that crazy spicy street food is just what you need to hit the spot. It's a little citrusy. It's perfect. We did it. We had an amazing street food tour of Myeongdong. Thanks to Paul from Taste So Good. Oh, wow. Dude, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. I'm so glad you could experience all that street food here in Seoul. There's so many awesome things. We just scratched the surface, but I don't know. There's so many awesome things. What was your favorite? Oh, it's a hard one, man. Egg toast and chicken on a skewer. That chicken was awesome. That dude totally like sacrificed his hand for us. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he's dude. a little ballsy. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, yeah. He like burned his hand. <laughs> I thought he lost a finger, then he was like losing an arm. It was crazy. <laughs> it was and worth it. yeah, I mean, I, you know, you have to go explore. It's like an entertainment district. Things are happening everywhere. So much street food. I think it's the spot in Seoul that it has the most, from what I've seen. Absolutely. Just like street food, street food, street food. A lot of things we didn't eat that I've eaten before, like dopoki, uh, sundae, I mean, just so many things. Lots of rice, lots of rice cakes. Yeah, there's just so much. You can get that traditional, you get that crazy. There's just, it's an overload of the sun. And then after that, we came here to the- Chungge Chong. Chungge Chong. Chungge Stream. Chungge is this, it's a beautiful stream. And next to it, we have this like craft beer bar slash restaurant called the Craft Hands. Really nice ambiance, lots of locals. I mean, it's basically all locals, yeah. very young. It's like a garden outside slash terrace upstairs. That's where we sat. Really cool spot, good craft beer. And guys, if you love this video, give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Paul. I taste so good so because good. it tastes so good in Seoul. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Seoul, South Korea. Peace. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Seoul, South Korea. I'm here with my friend Paul from Taste So Good. And where are we right now? So we're right at the Bukchon Hanuk village in Seoul. Okay, so this is like a 14th century village that's been preserved. It's located right between two different palaces on the hill. This is where government officials and nobility used to live. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. It looks amazing. It's like one of the most authentic neighborhoods in the city. And before we explore the whole thing, we're gonna go eat some delicious Korean food. Absolutely. I'm starving. Where's breakfast at? We're gonna go find it. Let's go explore. It's the best way to find Korean food is just by exploring and following your nose. So let's go find someplace good. Okay. Like Paul was saying, people still live in this neighborhood. So the best time to come is between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. and talk in whispers. These people are talking way too loud. It's only 8.20 in the morning, so I'm not gonna be one of them. I'm gonna leave and go look for some food and then we'll come back, right? Yeah, definitely. So the locals are still living here, so I wanna respect them. Uh, be quiet in the morning. Don't be a bad tourist. This is kind of a traditional type of food, all kinds of snack food, so easy go-to place that's always good. The gimbab looks good. Wow, the bibimbab looks good. Let's go inside, let's eat. Hello. And I say, oh. So this restaurant is pretty small as you can see. It's like a diner, a Korean diner setting. They have a huge menu, lots of kimbap, so lots of like those Korean hand rolls. They have like 10 different variations. They have cutlets, they have dumplings, Korean soups, rice toppings, noodles. And now uh, to get the lady's attention, there's no button here. So to get her attention, I have to say yo-yo. Yo-yo. Yogi-yo. Yogi-yo. Okay. Yogi-yo. <laughs> Alright, so I got one of my favorite Korean foods, so this is called kimchi jjigae, it literally translates to kimchi stew, and to me it's just the best way to start a morning. It is just a simple stew, it has kimchi, it has pork, it's got green onions, uh, it's just the spicy, it's sour, it's just the heartiest dish you're going to get here. 
and it comes with a side of rice here. So I'm super excited to try this out. We've got some different banchans here, including more kimchi and other things. So this is going to be the perfect meal before we go to the Hanuk village. I'm hot as hell, man. Yeah, it's hot? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wait a sec. Oh. So good. It's boiling hot. Would immediately this feels so much better. It's better than any cup of coffee you're gonna get. So much more energy. Oh, yeah. Alright, so what I got today is something I haven't tried. It's called Nyangmang. And it's basically cold buttwheat noodles with an egg, spicy sauce, cucumber, radish, and ice. This thing looks amazing. I mean super super cold though. As you can see the ice is around it melting. It's like bathed in this freezing water. And next to us, we got two different uh, kimbaps, right? So we got a pure kimchi one, and then we got one with tuna and kimchi. I love it, and they make them really, really thick. So I mean, they don't hold back in terms of portion sizes. This is amazing. And on the side, we have uh, three of the banchis kimchi. We got a gelatin with like some spice, and something else in there, it's like more veg. Oh, I love the veggies here in Korea, love them. All right, so first thing I gotta do, I gotta mix this up, right? Break it apart. Nice, super thin, like almost like glass noodles, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's gonna be so cold and spicy. What a good combination. Mm. Got the eggs, break it up. It's gotta really mix it up. Like, whoa, look at that. This is amazing. I'm just cutting them up. Well, Paul was telling me they usually give you scissors, so you can just like make them super thin noodles or like cut them up so they're tiny, right? This is how I have to cut it up today. <laughs> I, want, I want to show you this. Look at this. Oh, it's amazing. All right, let's gonna dive in. Mm. Mm. Super cold and at the same time the spice. Wow. That's, that's like a really crazy combination. I've never had like that. And uh, also they have this for summer, like during the summer, it's really hot outside. So they eat like super, super, super cold. Ooh, dude, this is like, I'm having like brain freeze at the same time, my, my little penguin. You definitely need scissors to cut this up, because it's a little too much, right? It's like, it took me a while to get, get some egg. Mmm. Yummy egg. Mmm. Wow, I just had a big piece of yolk. <laughs> and next, I'm gonna get some of the cabbage, right? Just mix it together. They're super yummy. Spicy, I mean, it will give you a little bit of a brain freeze though, so please be careful. Yeah, I mean, it's just a great dish. Uh, I highly recommend it, I haven't tried it before, so it's good to, to like get a taste of it. But next, I gotta try my favorite thing ever, the kimbap. Mm. Oh wow. This rice is different too. It's like a pinkish rice. Mm. Look at this. Also, oh, this one has uh, both, right? Kimchi and tuna. I just love this. I can eat this all day long. Mm. Mm. This is like mega big, really big. So you have canned tuna. It's not like sashimi tuna. It's canned tuna. It gives it a nice taste between the, the carrot, the egg, the kimchi. What else is in here? Got some cabbage, the rice. The rice is really nice. It's not just regular rice, like white rice. It has like a different like, uh, you know, like a, almost like a, not minty, but like a, a different like tang to it, you know? I'm gonna try my favorite thing ever, the kimchi. Mmm, spicy all day, man. And the gelatin, it's like jello, right? Mmm. Oh man, it's like very bland, but the spice, <laughs> Hits you hard. Mmm. Oh, I like this. Not so spicy. The vegetarian in Korea, number one. Oh man, I'm really enjoying this meal. Really filling. <laughs> this, like, it's too much. I need to get scissors. But whatever. Mm. All right, so for me, kimbap is just like peanut butter and jelly. It's just such a great comfort food. It's easy, it's quick, it's convenient, it's cheap, it's just so delicious. So there's so many different things going on in here. 
This is just like a little flavor bomb. It's waiting to go off my mouth, so I'll just try this out. Mmm. You got that tuna crunchiness of the radish. My favorite part is the perilla leaf, so that's called gate nip in Korea. And it's kind of a minty, it's kind of a strong flavor, but it just ties everything together. Oh, that is awesome. And the scrambled egg, I gotta love that as well. So there's so many different flavors going on there, it's great. I'm a huge fan of glass noodles, but, wow. but these with the spice and how cold it is, it's so unique. And I highly recommend cutting it though because there's, it's so hard to get it down, you know. Oh man, this is so good. You know what happens is because the they're so thin and they've been like soaked up in this like, I guess it's like a the sauce slash water. It becomes slimy, you know. Oh, it's really nice. The eggs, fantastic with it. Hmm. Oh man, gotta love the egg. And this is freaking straight up ice balls. Yeah. Ice, ice. Keeps it really cold. <laughs> so refreshing. Mm -hmm. The tuna kimbap is good, but the kimchi one is outstanding. Super spicy. Dip it in here. Let it absorb that soy sauce. Oh. So this is a rice cake. Oh wow. Mm. Some like what? Powdered sugar on top? I think it's uh, like soybean powder. Mm. Had a lot of that in Japan. Like a lot. 18,000. 18,000? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, guys, we just had a monstrous meal. So good for 18,000 total. Talking about like $16, US dollars. It was so big, filling, and delicious. And yeah. that's basically a Korean diner, right? Yeah, you could even finish it all. And all the banchan is refillable, so if you want more kimchi or something, you're gonna eat more. So it was a huge feast. It just really hit the spot. Yeah, yeah, it hit the spot. I mean, it, we didn't need the kimbap, but yeah. because the place had so many and everybody was having them, I decided we had to. And I, I personally love it, you know? So I actually ate all that. <laughs> like, I ate all the kimbap. I left some of my noodles. <laughs> yeah, and now we're headed back into the, the village. It's right here. Let's see what they have. Um, hoping they have some stuff uh, like some, you know, some souvenir shops and stuff. I want to buy some stuff for my kids, and I just want to see what it's all about. Yeah, I think uh, the weather's great. I think it's a great way to spend your last day here in Korea. You're going to be able to have a great experience in the Han Oaks, and yeah, it's a good way to just say say goodbye to Seoul for now. Hopefully, you'll be back. So we're back in the village, and uh, we're hiking up yeah. to the observatory. And now the village has woken up, as you can see. Basically all the souvenir shops are open. People are out strolling. And yeah, what a hike. Yeah, <laughs> super I, I, steep, super steep. All that kimbap is sitting in your stomach. Yeah. Oh. Okay, where is this thing? Right here? Yeah. Oh. This viewpoint's called view four. You can see all the traditional housing, like the roofs. And in the backdrop, we got the skyline. So really nice, but I think we got better spots, right? Yeah, Perhaps so we're just spots. kind of getting to the cool place. So the further you go up, the higher and better the view is going to be. So definitely it's just kind of like a little preview of what's to come. So obviously all this architecture is so cool and just so traditional. It's really nice to, well, to see. So we finally made it to one of the main streets and this one's called Bukshon no Gil. No Gil 11, something like that. Or 11 Gil. And uh, it's a little under construction, but as you can see, it's on a slant going all the way up, and everything is authentic here. Beautiful houses. I love the stones. The rooftop is very iconic for like what Korea is all about. Mm. But where it's at are the doors. The doorways are super cool, and uh, I'm about to get hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta stand here in this doorway. As you can see, this is the neighborhood. Yeah. It's beautiful. So where are the souvenir shops at? So, I don't know, we're gonna find them. We're gonna find out, discover that together. <laughs> <laughs> don't come in here hungry because there's no real food like restaurant restaurants. That's right outside the village. And let's just pass this car. Yeah, but the good thing is that the village is so small, you don't need to spend a lot of time here. So you can go down and explore all the good things around the palaces and other Incidong areas, things like that, so. Yeah, I mean, what I've seen here is just like some ice cream shops, that's it. Yeah. Ice cream and tea, but Amazing vantage points. Oh, here we go. This is it. Look at this. That's Instagram worthy. Right there. 
This is really, really funny. Check out this doorway. It's, it's like for what? For kids? <laughs> <laughs> Your kids take this door. You get the big door. <laughs> so I walked into the souvenir shop at the top of the hill and they have so many different things here from Korea. They also have some Chinese artifacts, some stuff in Nepal. I mean, a lot of different things, but I really wanted something Korean. I actually had to buy some, uh, some gifts for family and friends. And I went with of like two of these, set these out. Got a great deal, they made out of clay, and this is actually like traditional, um, this is for the wedding gown, right? This is the wedding gown? Yes, that's the bride. Yeah, this is the bride, and I, I got, so I didn't get these, I got the ones that are the handbooks, and they're really cool, uh, super good deal, and yeah, they're a little heavy though, I was gonna take some more, but my bag would be extremely overweight, <laughs> and I'm not interested in paying overweight fees right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, definitely come up to one of the souvenir shops. This is also very traditional, right? These like, like boxes, I don't know, what are they made out of? Oh, Mother of Pearl, wow. Yeah, so they're 200 each, so like that's 200 US dollars. Really nice, I mean, if you're thinking of getting like a jewelry box, I highly recommend that. And they have also masks. So these are the traditional masks right here. Lots of masks, I already bought a few of these. Got this one in white, love that one. And yeah, that's basically what you do here. Oh, some cool things. And you can pay with credit card, FYI. <laughs> this, this, is, this country is all about credit cards. I think you're not showing the best part though. Yeah. Thank you. Nation Art Museum, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I almost got in my car. <laughs> So this is like a taffy that they make, it's really traditional, but it's funny because if somebody tells you to eat taffy, yotmogo, it means a like very, very bad word. Okay. <laughs> so taffy. Oh my god. Oh, look at this. Crazy scissor. It's very hard. This is like rock solid. Yeah. So it's like peanuts? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. No, pumpkin. Pumpkin. Mm. You made this? It's very nice, but... You guys slowly break through it. Yeah. Mm. Check out the scissor he uses. Hey, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the traditional hanbok. When you come to Korea, you have to dress up in the hanbok and either come here or to one of the palaces. If you go to the palace, you enter for free. Mm. That's like an amazing perk. But I mean, it's just the way, it, it's this, it's such an experience going to the palace dressed up because you know, you get awesome photos and everybody's like loving it, you know? Yeah. They really love to interact with you, especially the locals. But one thing I'm going to recommend is if you come here in like July or August, you might not want to rent the hanbok because those things get really hot and you're yeah. going to sweat and it's not going to be very comfortable. But if you come a different time of the year, definitely check it out because it's really cool. It makes the best pictures. Yeah, and I actually went to the palace when I dressed up in the hanbok uh -huh. and I was it was scorching, yeah. I was melting, like melting. I had to have a hot stew after, which I didn't, it didn't make sense to me, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're, and it's we, super embarrassing to have to give your hanbok back to the rental person, <laughs> it's like dripping with sweat. Oh, I know, I know. It's awful. All right, so we just exited the village, and now we're gonna go get a coffee really fast. Oh my God, so many souvenir shops. This is never ending right now. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hey. You? Iced Americano? Iced Americano. Two. Two, yes. All right, after walking like for one minute, we found a coffee shop <laughs> and we got the Americanos because we love American coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, super strong coffee, always get it with ice, no yeah. sugar. This is definitely the drink that is most popular in Korea as mm. far as coffee goes. So if you're coming here, you definitely want to check out Americanos. Yeah, man. Oh. Oh, I love it. It just gives yeah. me a jolt of energy right now. It's perfect. And yeah, guys, I mean, we had just an incredible day here. We started off with a delicious breakfast. Oh, yes. Oh, the kimbap. Oh, my God. My stew was amazing. Yeah? Super enjoyed that, yeah. I mean, I like the noodles. I'm not a huge fan of, like, frozen noodles. Yeah, but yeah I mean, really good, filling breakfast, very affordable, only 18,000 won, so definitely recommend going to like, a Korean diner and eating just like that. It's literally right here around the corner, very easy to find. And then after, go explore the village. And one thing about the village that we want to tell you is that it's it's very, very small. I mean, you got like two or three streets, a few different points, uh, you know, like vantage points you can see over the village. You also have souvenir shops. You know, I bought some stuff, definitely worth buying some stuff from Korea. And then, yeah, just walk around. It literally takes one hour to see it. Yeah. You walk around, get photos. And, you know, if you really want to go, you know, real traditional, you go and you rent a handbook. You know, you rent it right here. All these places rent it out. I think it's like what, uh, very affordable. It's like, very cheap. I think it's like 10 US dollars for a rental. 
for you, four hours or something. Four hours? Yeah. So you go in, you get shots, you look like you're Korean from the 14th, uh, 17th century, right? <laughs> or the 17th exactly. century. Uh, you rent it, you take photos, then you come back, return it, and that's it. I mean, that's, all, that's basically all you can do here. And inside, souvenir shops and nothing else. And then one guy selling taffy. Yeah, but he was cool though. Yeah. Now, definitely one thing I'd like to add though is make sure you come here early if you can because it's still pretty early in the morning and it's just now starting to get crowded. So if you want yeah. those really good shots, you're going to have to get here super early in the morning. Yeah. So try to be here by 9.30 or 10 a.m. definitely. Yeah, 10 a.m. is when it says it like starts, like people can actually come in and start talking. Mm -hmm. If you get there earlier, just try to be really quiet, be respectful for the, you know, the neighborhood. And yeah, guys, I hope you love this video. This is my last official video here in Seoul. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you loved it. It was an epic day. Thank you, Paul. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks for joining dude. us here. Be sure to come back. Yeah, for sure. Please subscribe to his channel. Tastes so good. Subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below if you liked it. And we'll see you in the next Shop Food Adventure somewhere in the world. Peace. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Seoul, South Korea, the capital of South Korea, one of the best cities in the world. I've been exploring this country for two weeks and I gotta say, I am in love with Korea. It's so amazing, the food's outstanding, it's clean, it's connected, fastest internet in the world. And yeah, I've been, I just had an amazing time. I gotta give a big thanks to my friends at KTO for bringing me over here, KTO Los Angeles. And what I wanna do today is I wanna take you with me from Seoul all the way back to Miami. We're in a journey from Seoul Station, the number one station, the busiest station in the country, and we're going to the airport. From the airport, we're flying to Dallas. From Dallas, we're flying to Miami. It's gonna be like something like 24 hours before I get home. So are you guys ready? Let's go from Seoul to Miami. Let's go. We've now entered Seoul Station, the busiest train station in all of Korea. Behind me, what you see is the ticket booth for the KTX, which is the bullet train, and that connects you all the way down to Busan and multiple other destinations throughout the country. I read it like four times already. I went to Busan twice and back. I mean, it's super fast, very efficient, and affordable. 190 miles per hour, and if you wanna go first class, it's like 80 bucks. If you wanna go in economy, it's like $40. So, I mean, really affordable. They don't sell food or drinks on board, so if you're gonna do that, if you're, if you're gonna ride the train you know, down to Busan, it's like two and a half hours, so I suggest you go to one of the convenience stores here, one of the storeways, get some food, and then ride the train. And right now, we're walking to the Endersol Station to the AREX, which is the Airport Express train. This is the fastest way to get to the airport. If you guys didn't know, the airport's actually not in Seoul, it's in Incheon, a different city. If you go by car, it might take an hour to an hour and a half, depending on traffic, but the Airport Express train is the fastest way to get there. It takes 51 minutes, and I think there's one or two per hour, it just depends on the hour. And if you're confused on how to get to the AREX, look down, you see this blue line? So the airport line, follow that all the way, and you get there. Let's go buy our tickets. So the Airport Railroad Express train, or the AREX, is a rail line that links Seoul Station with Incheon Airport. It is one of the fastest and most convenient ways to travel between the two. The express line runs non-stop from the second floor basement of Seoul Station to Incheon Airport and it takes roughly 43 minutes if you leave from Terminal 1 and 51 minutes if you leave from Terminal 2. The fare is 9,500 won for adults and 7,500 for children. That was quick and easy. I bought the ticket, cost me 9,500. Now I'm going to the express train track and my departure is at 12.50. Let's do this thing. That's it, we're boarding. We leave in 20 minutes, but the train's here waiting for passengers. Perfect, this is great. And I'm in car number one, seat three. One is right here, awesome. Dude, I can't wait. I love these express trains. Asia's full of them, every single airport. Seat 3D. And what, what I heard that this train is never really full, so you never will have a problem because you know every half hour, so it's not that bad, or every 40 minutes. And yeah, they also have free Wi Fi on board and smooth. I mean, be there in 40 minutes, we leave in, in 22 minutes, so in an hour, I'll be at the airport. I'm gonna actually be there like three and a half hours early, which is great, you know, so I can check in, you know, walk around the airport, buy some souvenirs. Um, eat. I'm like already starving. I had breakfast like three hours ago, so I'm really hungry. And yeah, let's go to the airport.
After a 43 minute train ride, we're here at Incheon Airport. I mean, that is the best way to get here. If you go into taxis and it costs you a lot more, it'll probably take you double the time. So I highly recommend taking that train. It's just the best way, the most efficient way. And yeah, let me tell you a little bit about Incheon Airport. So this is one of the largest and busiest airports in the world. It is the largest airport in South Korea and has been voted the best airport in the world by the Airports Council International every year since 2005. It has also been named the world's cleanest airport and the world's best international transit airport. The airport contains private sleeping rooms, a spa, a casino, a museum of Korean culture, an ice skating rink, and even a golf course. It served over 68 million passengers in 2018 and it opened for business on March 29, 2001. And yeah, let's go right now check in. I still have like four hours for my flight, so I'm here really, really early. I mean, I really wanted to get here and just get ready for this flight. I don't want to, you know, have any delays and miss my flight. I mean, I really don't want that to happen. And yeah, now we're gonna go check into the flight. I leave in roughly three and a half hours, so I'm like really early. I'm gonna go check in, go through security. Once I get in, we're gonna go eat. Let's go. 만족스러우셨나요? It's pretty amazing. We have this like robot that takes photos. So it takes a photo of you and you can print it. So you send it to yourself via Facebook or email or your phone. This is freaking amazing, the future. So I went to the American Airlines lounge and the food was not good at all. So I decided to come look for some Korean food and there's a food court here near my gate. So I'm coming up here, there's a lot of different food, but there's also Korean food. So, you know, I gotta go Korean, I have to. I need some Korean food right now. This food court's very different from all the food courts I've ever been to. So as soon as you go up the escalators, you go to the right, and then there it says order here. So you go to a little station, you order there, there's four different menus. There's like the Korean food, which is right behind me. There's burgers, there's another one, and then it's Heineken. So you order whatever you want. I'm going with Korean food. Obviously, I love Korean food. I want to like end this trip off with a bang. I got some bibimbap, super hot with octopus and lots of veg. And also rice, veg, octopus, all I can't wait. You can also get some soju, you can get some beer, you can get some wine. I mean, I opted not to drink anything today. I'm just gonna take it easy, not drink anything. And uh, yeah, actually, there we go. Bringing get the food. And here we go, another feast in Korea. I mean, I had to finish it off with some bibimbap. And this one I haven't tried. I haven't tried spicy octopus before. Uh, what do we got here? We got some sprouts, some spring onions. We got some, what is that? Um, must be another radish, cucumber, the octopus, rice, and seaweed. On the side we have kimchi, we have olives, spicy fish right here, and another like miso soup. It's more like a miso base, right? I'm gonna start with this. Mm. Oh, super nice. Mm. I love how light it is. And you get the seaweed. Wow, it's so good. Again, this is how a Korean meal is. You get the main dish, and we always give you the sides. Mm. Oh wow, that's spicy. Super spicy. It's actually not a fish. It's more like a like a radish. A radish is very spicy. And then here we go. Gotta mix this up, right? Mix it up. Oh wow, so good. The best thing to do is just mix all the white rice until every single piece of rice is red. It's not ready. Like that. Wow, check that out. Oh, it's still really hot. Every single beef and I've had has been so good. So good. Just the veg and the flavors, the contrast of flavors. Mm, you know, the crunch. The spice, the tenderness of the of the octopus. Oh, and this one also has. Oh no, that's radish. I thought it was. I thought it was noodles. Mm. This octopus is delicious. This is a Korean staple. Beef bimbap. You can get it so many different ways: beef, pork, egg. Like this is perfect. I can eat this food all day. All day. Mm. Now I'm just gonna enjoy this, and I'll see you in a dippy. All right, it's 4.30, we're about to board the flight. We're at gate 31, and yeah, this is gonna be a 13-hour flight. Very long with a Dreamliner 787. 
Well, I'm, I'm extremely tired already. Uh, the food just like dropped me down a little bit. So as soon as I get on the flight, I'm gonna, you know, sit down, get ready, relax, and enjoy a 13 hour flight. Wow, it's long, it's long. These flights are really crazy because, you know, what you have to do is you have to keep moving. If you just like stay like seated the whole time, your legs really get numb. So I highly recommend like moving around every like two or three hours. I mean, if you want to sleep, sleep as long as possible, obviously. But yeah, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. I can't wait to see my family. Let's go board the flight. Hello, how are you? Oh, very good, you? You're right, perfect. So wow, that was a long 13 hour flight. I mean, my God, so long. From Seoul all the way to Dallas, 13 hours. I basically slept the whole flight, watched like two movies, but slept like good eight hours. So I was up for like five hours and yeah, I mean, I just got here and uh, I had to get my bags, go through security again, get back up here into the terminal and now I have to go to Terminal A because my flight's name is Terminal A. I have to take the Skylink there. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get some barbecue. The barbecue here in Dallas airport is amazing. Let's go eat something. I'm really hungry and I probably won't eat on the flight because they never serve you food from Dallas to Miami. All right guys, so I came here to the only barbecue joint in Terminal A, it's called Salt Lick, the Salt Lick. And I got brisket, <laughs> always go for the brisket. Brisket in Texas is the best. I got some coleslaw and I got some beans and I literally have like 10 minutes to scarf it down and go straight to my gate. My gate's actually like eight away, so I mean it's not so far but it will take me a little bit. So I gotta like hurry up and eat. Man, the brisket here, the barbecue in general in, in, uh, in Texas is amazing. So I'm gonna like rush right now. Let's see how this goes. Bam. These utensils are, are not good. Mm. Oh yeah. It's actually like a very sweet barbecue sauce. Mm. Super tender brisket. Brisket all day. Love the piece of brisket because it has a little bit of fat. And it's just so juicy and tender. Mmm, so good. Mm. The beans are delicious. And so whenever you come to Dallas Airport, I highly recommend going for barbecue. Mmm, Texas barbecue is the best. You know, you can either go with the pork, like the pulled pork, the ribs, or the brisket. I always go for the brisket. All right guys, I'm just gonna enjoy this really quick and fly to the gate. Mm. Both of those are really good. Let's check out the coleslaw. It's okay. All this sauce. Barbe this barbecue sauce is so sweet. I'm just gonna drip it all over. So that. So freaking good. Yeah, so American Airlines, the food was really bad. The past two times I've flown them, I haven't been impressed at all. Mm. So crazy, crazy story. I just got upgraded for the first time with American Airlines. They never upgrade me. This is great. So I made my flight and I'm going business class. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, this is great. 10L. Amazing. This was such an epic surprise. I was so tired. I got here and I'm like, wow, blown away. Thank you, American Airlines. They upgraded me to business class on their 777-200. This is seat 10L, so it has a flat lay bed, huge TV screen, got two USB ports, got two power outlets, so if I want to charge my laptop or work on my laptop, and yeah, 10L. Guys, it's gonna be an amazing flight. It's gonna be so good. I'm, just, I'm like a little sad that I'm tired because I might sleep, and I really just want to hang out, watch TV, and really experience it. I might not sleep. I might just chill, have some champagne, maybe have another drink, and just relax. This is this is really what flying is about. Going to business class is a whole different experience than going to economy. And I, I I don't remember the last time I flew business class. It's probably been like a year or two. And my the last time I flew like round trip business class was with Finnair from Miami to Helsinki to Bangkok and then from Singapore to Helsinki to Miami. And I've done it with Qatar, I've done it with America, I've done it with Iberia, I've done it with British, but it's been a while. Welcome aboard American Airlines Flight 2206 with service to Miami. 
Wow, we're about to land in Miami only to two and a half hours. They cut like 30 minutes off the flight time. I like sat down, started watching a movie, had short ribs, had a, a glass of wine, and that's it. We're landing. I really wish it was like a 15 hour flight so I experienced it better. You know, flying 15 hours in those classes is completely different than flying three hours. And you're in your own private space, you get to relax. And, and yeah, that's basically it. Flying business clubs in American is awesome. I highly recommend it. Oh, whoa, they're giving the lights here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're about to land right now, guys. So I'll see you on the ground. After traveling for 24 hours, I'm finally here in Miami. Wow, that was a long journey. We started off in Seoul Station, took the express train to the airport. From there, we flew 13 hours on the Dreamliner with American Airlines all the way to Dallas. It was comfortable, TV, lots of food, you can drink if you want to. Then we got to Dallas, I had a quick two hour connect. You know, I basically just got my bags, checked in again, went through security, had some barbecue, went to the gate, and I was super surprised because American Airlines upgraded me to business class. Thank you, American Airlines. I really wish it was the way to Asia, but I'll, I'll take it. Business class going from Dallas to Miami was sick. Three hours, I had short rib, I had wine, I watched the movie. And yeah, I'm here, and guys, if you're gonna go to Asia, I highly recommend going to Korea. This year I've done Japan, India, China, and now Korea, and I gotta say, Korea blew my mind. The food was so good. The country's connected, internet-wise and transportation-wise. It's super clean, people speak English, and there's so much to explore. I would highly suggest two to four weeks minimum, but you can do 10 days if you really want to. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere in the world. Peace. Ooh.